the Little League World Series champions. Chris Vaughn telling his son that he was being drafted. You want to come to work with me next week? Makes it so magical. Deuce Vaughn in the end zone. of the SEC undefeated 17th ranked Ole Miss has won 27 of its last 28 home games against non-conference foes they look to knock off Georgia Tech for the second consecutive season after a 42 to nothing whitewashing of the Jackets in Atlanta last year. Rebels take the field here at home having found some rhythm offensively for the passing game but the running game has been MIA to this point. That's the subject of our conversation tonight as we welcome you to Oxford, Mississippi. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. We got Cole Kublik down on the field. Last year, Lane Kiffin's team was third in the country in rushing yards, a top 10 offense. They haven't found that rhythm yet. They're going to be missing some key players. Quinchon Judkins will dress, but he's unlikely to go, we believe. Yeah, and I think that just means you lean on who's been your best player, which is Jackson Dart. I really think this high profile quarterback competition that we, he was in with Spencer Sanders pushed him to refine his skills and we're seeing a guy that can push the ball down the field with accuracy. He's playing more confident and he's playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC right now. So I would lean into that while the run game still continues to sort itself out and we see who ends up trotting out there first and an interesting twist for Ole Miss they warmed up at their indoor not on the field here tonight before the game Cole, you're in the indoor what did you see from Quinchon Judkins yeah I was inside watching the team warm up Tom he was not a full participant but didn't feel like he was held back or he didn't do anything so he does he is available tonight and did show that if need be he could go out and perform for this Ole Miss football team but it's a team that has not rushed the football well thus far this season the offensive line has not played up to the standard that Lane Kiffin wants them to so talking to Charlie Weiss yesterday he said we might be going more empty empty is something that we think we can get some looks from the Georgia Tech defense that we like and also going back to the Mercer game we asked about running the football in that game he said the reason we didn't run the ball more in that game is because we were throwing the ball so well so Charlie Weiss Lane Kiffin gonna have a plan with or without Quinchon Judkins tonight now they'd love to be balanced but they may not be and still find success meanwhile on the other side for Georgia Tech Haynes King is a guy that's not unfamiliar to SEC fans he was with Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M for a couple of seasons he kind of hit the reset button on his career going to the flats he's more comfortable he's more confident and his stats are much better he's playing like a completely different quarterback we're going to break down his mechanics because he's made some significant mechanical changes to his throwing motion which I think has helped his accuracy but this is a completely revamped Georgia Tech offense from what it was last year they built it from the ground up Haynes King has been a great addition to that as well as a number of SEC transfers around him so this is a Georgia Tech offense that has a ton of talent they're going to go fast they're going to try to put up some points they're going to be aggressive should be a good one tonight. Cole, you just talked with Lane Kiffin. What'd you learn? He called me over. And I said, what do you do? Spread it out, throw it around a little bit. And he said, Quinchon tells me he's playing. So it might be a plan that we thought all along we were going to see tonight from the Ole Miss Rebels. It's been rib injuries that has kept Quinchon off the uh, practice field for the course of this week. And the lane train ready to roll. And you can imagine there might be more of a smile from Kiffin if he can get Quinchon Judkins back out there who set the Ole Miss rushing record last year. In Oxford, they've never lost a party, and the football team so far this season has not lost a game. Rebels won the toss. They've elected to take the ball and get their offense on the field to get it started. 30 years, these two programs were conference mates in the SEC, and now meeting for the second consecutive year in the regular season. Gavin Stewart will kick it off. And a chance for a return for Ole Miss. Ulysses Bentley takes it to the 20 and nearly broke it, but got taken down by a shoestring. Here's Jackson Dart, who is no stranger to quarterback competitions. He went through it at USC, then last year here at Ole Miss, and when Ole Miss brought in Spencer Sanders, the record setter from Oklahoma State, he told us yesterday, when I first heard we're going after Spence, there's some definite question marks in my head, but Lane Kiffin explained to him, we've got to have quarterback depth. 
And by the way, that's a third straight quarterback competition dart is one. Yeah, you think he had a human reaction. No quarterback likes to think that their job is in jeopardy or their performance is dictated going and getting somebody, but it pushed him to be better, and you're going to see that tonight. And so Judkins is out there to start the game for the Rebels, and Dart is able to get it out to the freshman Aiden Williams. Great history, that number one here at Ole Miss, and they feel like he can be a number one. Well, especially with their number one receiver, Trey Harris, out tonight. He's been the touchdown machine. Aiden Williams, true freshman, number two player in the state out of Mississippi. He's big, he's long, he's raw, but he's going to get a chance to make some plays tonight. Laquan Treadwell, A.J. Brown, Jonathan Mingo, the last three to wear that number. And here's number four, Quinshawn Judkins. He's been a key for this team as they try to get, get it going. They, they haven't spent much time on their opening drives, averaging under a minute, scoring on both of their opening drives through two games. It's not a bad problem to have. Judkins has eight 100 yard games to his name. Play action and Dart fires to the perimeter, and that is knocked away by Jalen King. Knocked it out of Jordan Watkins' hands. Well, it's one of the routes that Jackson Dart throws so well, this corner route. DB does a great job. You see, they're timing that punch. I mean, ball's accurate, maybe a little low, maybe a hair late, but that's a catchable, good throw. Just a better play by the DB. On third and four, QB run and room. Jackson Dart got to the third level and he turns in a 20 yard scramble before LaMiles Brooks brought him down. Face full of sod is worth it for Dart. Good legs. And yeah, left tackle Victor Kern getting out there, getting a block on a DB. Well, when you're 6'4, 320 pounds, you got a Georgia Tech player down. Well, fellas, that was something Lane Kiffin told us in meetings yesterday in reference to the run game. He said we, we should have run more gap scheme. We relied on the zone plays a little bit too much. You see a little bit of pin and pull right there, keeping the tight end, blocking down, pulling around. Some early success, adding a blocker as well. Adenosa Rubin is the injured yellow jacket. Already missing some depth on that defensive line. Sylvania Juin. Senior from Belgium is out with a torn ACL for the rest of the year. Now Ruben Clemson transfer help to the sideline. Yeah, it's just going to be a quarterback lead power. You're going to see two pullers right here coming around. And like I mentioned, Victor Kern, that left tackle number 79. Anytime you're 320 pounds, you get to go block a 180 pound DB. That's a good day. Mm. Easy work there on the outside. Great lead block. And Obviously, Dart, that's what makes him so special, his ability to make guys miss in the open field, and he's trying to finish that run with a big stiff arm, too. This is an Ole Miss offense that two years ago had its first 10-win regular season in school history behind Lane Kiffin in the offense last year, top 10. In total offense, third in the country in rushing. They've lived through the air this season. Here's Judkins, a record setter from a year ago. Brought down by Tatum, it's a pickup of five, and Quinshawn Judkins all smiles early. This, this is a dude. It's an understatement. The, the, word, the term dude gets thrown around a lot. He's had a slow start, but he will be in the Heisman conversation if he gets back to the form that he was in last year, rushing for over 1,500 yards. He's a workhorse. They don't make him like that anymore. A guy that literally can take a handoff every single down, can be solid in protection. You can give it to him 30 times a game, and he never seems like he slows down. Third down now. He was the... Second fastest SEC freshman to 1,000 yards right behind Emmett Smith in 1987. Maybe a busted play. Dart fires anyway. And wow, nearly caught in. Caught by Aiden Williams. Paul Moala brought the pressure on Dart. Something looked off from the beginning. It just double hitches to that side. And Georgia Tech is a team that likes to play a lot of man coverage. Normally man press on the outside. That time. They gave a little cushion and broke on those hitch routes. Dart got spooked a little bit, did a good job of not forcing a throw and threatening a turnover when you're in field goal range. 47-yard attempt for Caden Davis. Texas A&M transfer is 4 for 4 to start the season. And Ole Miss held without a touchdown on its opening drive for the first time this season, but they get points out of it after all. And the 17th ranked team in the country takes a 3-0 lead at home against Tech. Jackets will have the ball when we return.
the vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Superb racing. Yes, guys. A double dose of Monday Night Football. On ESPN, Carr and the Saints meet Young and the Panthers. On ABC, Chubb and the Browns face Pickett and the Steelers. Saints-Panthers at 7 on ESPN. Browns-Steelers at 8 on ABC. The Little League World Series champions! You're watching SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. There is no place in college football like Oxford, Mississippi, and the Grove. A little sampling of it throughout the weekend. City Grocery last night. Funkies never disappoints, and everybody and their brother was at the library. You got some good studying in, huh? Yeah, the library. That's the receipt that goes home. All the freshman parents go, oh, the kids spend a lot of time at the library. That's you. Funkies is easy to determine. The library... Not as much. Well, Haynes King has done some study in this season under Chris Wenke, co-offensive coordinator. He had that internship, you could say, under Jimbo Fisher. Both very demanding for their quarterbacks, and now a guy who's got SEC experience. He said, it was new to me moving to Atlanta and living in the big city. But he's acclimated well, and he's leading all ACC quarterbacks in passing yards and touchdowns. A one and one start for Georgia Tech. Open the season at Mercedes Benz with a loss to Louisville after a record setting second quarter. Jamal Haynes is the tailback, and the first carry is a positive one for the Jackets. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste with the stop, and Jackets will go no huddle. Second down. Yeah, and they're going to push the pace. Not new for Ole Miss, but this is a air raid slash pro style spread you out, come at you fast type offense. And they want to get the ball to the perimeter quickly and often. And that's Haynes, second touch in as many plays. He's got all seven yards so far for Georgia Tech. You know, the thing that has really helped Haynes King shake off some of the rust in the cobwebs and his experience at Texas A&M is this offense has been simplified. Playing the quarterback position has been simplified. Credit due to Chris Winkie, his quarterback coach, who is demanding, like you said, but has got a unique way of teaching the position to help his quarterbacks play more confident and faster, and you're seeing it. Third and a long two, and they go straight ahead and pick up a first down. Again, it's Haynes. And you think about the offense that he came from under Jimbo Fisher. It's complicated. Yeah, it's quarterback centric. He's got to handle every ounce of protection. There's adjustments pre-snap. There's adjustments post-snap. Oftentimes, quarterback gets bogged down by that a little bit. You play slower than you'd like to. Trey Cooley is in the backfield replacing Haynes and a little toss to Cooley to the short side and still found positive yardage climbs his way to a gain of four John Saunders Jr. with the stop for the Rebels. Big emphasis tonight for this Ole Miss defense because Georgia Tech in the run game loves to attack the edges stretches toss plays like you just saw they need to force everything east and west wash it out. Don't let this team get wide and find an alley to cut north and south. They'll empty the backfield here, five wide. Second down, six, pressure coming. King got rid of it in time, and he found Malik Rutherford, and he is gain of three and just missed picking up a first down by going out of bounds. Yeah, a little free rusher. That was just a blown protection, but because of the bunch set to the left, Ole Miss defenders had to give a little more grass than they'd like to. That meant that flat route was wide open. Third down three King trying to get everybody in the right spot pre snap. Like like a 10. Rutherford motions. Pressure coming from the backers again and they go to the back in Cooley and he picks up a Georgia Tech first down. Boy 
Just a little rub route here on the outside. You can see it on the right side of your screen here. Outside receiver just going to pick that linebacker just a little bit. It was actually a legal pick. Just get in his way. Make him either go under or over the top, and that flat route opens right up. Opening drive for Georgia Tech. Rebels had to settle for a field goal. Here's Cooley. And Cooley picks up five. Junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, started his career at Louisville. Got four touchdowns in the first couple of games. First to Tech to do that since 2018. Played 18 games with the Cardinals and faced his former team in the opener this year. On second and five. First down run for Cooley. One of the Tech offensive linemen lost his helmet. He'll have to leave for a play, but that's a pickup of 15. And Connor Scaglione, Princeton transfer, has to come out of the game and get a new hat, or at least get it fixed properly. And that's that stretch play that I was talking about, right? Offensive line goes very lateral, and what they're looking to do is get you to overcommit and find that lane north and south. That's something that Ole Miss up front is going to have to not chase the ball. Stay in your lane there. Make the ball run to the sideline. Leonard was the man in motion to try to go straight ahead. Another positive run for Trey Cooley. I was talking with Brent Key down on the field before the game about the stretch play. He kind of got a glimmer in his eye. He said, yeah, that's our bread and butter. Cole, why is, he, why is he so confident about the stretch play tonight? Well, I think, number one, you have a defensive line that's not necessarily as stout as some of the others they're going to see at the point of attack. Number two, it's never wrong. He asked me before the game, too, Tommy said, what's your favorite run play? I said, stretch. And he said, why? I said, it's never wrong. I mean, I, like you just saw there, it can hit behind the backside guard or he can hit out in front of the front side tackle. It can literally hit every gap that the defense has to contain. Tenth play of the opening drive for Georgia Tech. This is Haynes. And finally, Ole Miss came up and made a stop behind the line. It's a loss of perhaps a yard. Big Golding is a defensive coordinator for Ole Miss. First year after five seasons on Nick Saban's staff. I think he's done a great job of adapting what Alabama did so well and what he had success with there with what he's done in his past to match the skill set and the personnel that they have. I think this defensive line is well ahead of where he maybe thought it would be. Some of the transfers up there, Stephon Wynn, J.J. Pegues. They're more stout and bigger up front than they've been in the past. Third and six, maybe four down territory with the kicking woes for Tech this season. King taken down, just escaped the pocket. No gain, and on fourth down, Brent Key has been thinking about a change of kicker. Gavin Stewart, the starter last season, is over this year. Aiden Barr, Burr, excuse me, will come out and attempt the first. He has made both of his kicks. It was an open competition all week. He's saying, I'm not quite sure. We competed every position, so... We'll see Thursday what we got. This will be a 43-yard attempt for Burr. And it's blocked. Rebels have a chance, and the ball's still loose. Finally scooped up, and all miss. Thanks to Dejon Anthony, who found it will have great field position. Georgia Tech's kicking woes continue. Got enough penetration up front from Xavier Harris. Got a big paw on it. And then they just scooted it all the way down the field. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. A truck is a tool, but a Ram, a Ram is life. Innovations, comforts, and powertrains built to power all the lives you live. Ram.
superb racing. Yes, guys. Football is back. Got your new fantasy team name? Check. Grill? Check. Fancy grill? Check. Troy and Joe? Check. Bro and bro? Check. All the emotions? All season long? Check, baby. My darn thanks. What a wild day in the league. How about Eli Drinkwitz and Mizzou walking Ooh. off Kansas State to stay undefeated? 61 yarder. Thicker kicker got it done. You think he's going to have a good night in Columbia? <laughs> oh, yeah. The king of Columbia tonight. He'll be at the diner late night. Sudden change. Sometimes you like a little shot play here. Or you hand it off. Judkins trying to find some space. He's a physical runner. Second best freshman season in terms of yardage in the SEC behind Herschel Walker. So if you have a freshman year that compares with Emmett Smith and Herschel Walker, you're doing okay. Yeah, you put your name in the book. Judkins again. Found a hole for a moment and looks close to the first down. Boy, just so physical. I mean, the first guy never gets him down. Like he's going to square you up. He's going to put his shoulder down and. You better just hang on if you're playing defense. Third and short. Lane Kiffin is over talking with the headlines. He told Dart to slow it down and use a little bit of clock before this snap. Pressure up the middle. Judkins hesitates and he sneaks through and he's still on his feet. That is a as physical a three-yard run as you'll see. In this dude pulled a Houdini, just slipped his way through the first tackler. I think it was Zeke Biggers right here. 88 comes through and just tries to bear hug him, and Quinshawn's gone. He ducks right under it. Where did he go? Where did who go? Biggers, 333 pounds. Doesn't miss much. Ulysses Bentley is now in a running back for Ole Miss. Jordan Watkins with him in the backfield. And a keeper by Dart. He runs for another first down. That's a gain of 11. Well, that's what makes this offense and Jackson Dart so dangerous. Now that he's added the consistency of those explosive throws downfield, the fact that he can run the ball the way he can, that, that, that makes him a scary matchup for anybody. Bentley. Room to the outside, and he's got it down inside the five yard line. A pickup of seven. You think Ole Miss maybe heard us or anybody else talking about this run game needs to get going a little bit? I'd say they're committing to it right now. Yeah. On second and three, Dart. Snakes throw gets to the goal line and he is just short. He did pick up a first down. So it'll be first and goal inside the one now for Ole Miss on Rebels second possession. They're not wasting any time. Jackson Dart under center and tries to push forward. Gets stopped just short. How do you how do you pick your spot find your hole if you're the quarterback running a sneak. You just look for the crevice that's slightly wider. I mean, everybody's packed in there really tight. So sometimes, like, hey, I know my left guard. He's a little bigger, a little better, <laughs> bigger butt to get behind, you know? There's no science to it. You just close your eyes, dive forward, and hope for the best. Hopefully, someone gives you a little push from behind. Well, they're going to go out of shotgun now. He's going to run right at it. Jam Griffin is in there. Lead blocker. Dart reaches forward and gets in. Touchdown, Ole Miss. And right throw. Amari Harvey. Boy, watch the block, too, when we see a replay of this by J.J. Pegues, the defensive tackle. But remember, he was a tight end at Auburn. He comes down off the edge and just levels number seven for Georgia Tech. Let's make sure the knee didn't come down. Ball looks like it's extended. That's a touchdown. But you can see there, Pegues just absolutely leveled one, maybe two. Defenders there. Well, developing situation for Georgia Tech. Lamiles Brooks, one of their best defenders, is getting attention from the athletic training staff in the end zone. 
Brooks missed a good chunk of the second half against Louisville. That was a Cardinals comeback in the opener. The likely doesn't happen if the junior from Jacksonville is on the field. Brett Key knows he's a key to their defense, especially in the passing game. Cole? Yeah, he was a young man that Brink he told me he recruited when he was at Alabama when he was in the ninth grade. So they actually offered him a scholarship when he came to camp after they got a chance to see him before he went into the 10th grade. Now that's at Alabama. So it gives you an idea of just the level of talent that Miles Brooks had in high school and what Coach Key thought of him. His, uh, his given name is Miles, but one of his high school teammates, kind of like LeBron, just started threw an L.A. in front of it. So I call him La Miles. I said I really liked it, so I stuck with it. Can I call you Latom? Yeah, sure. Latommy. Mm -hmm. Kane Davis with the point after. I mean, just take a look at JJ Pugge, 6'2, 315, plays D tackle. He's like, you know what? I used to play some tight end, though. I miss it. Watch him take seven. Oh, my God. oh and he got another one. He got two of them there. <laughs> I mean, the physicality is back in the ground. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> Even easier than this. We need a clutch hit. Derek. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? All eyes are on the WNBA this postseason. Superstars elevate to new heights on the W's biggest stage. The moment is here. We're all about the WNBA playoffs. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet, connecting homes across the SEC. Special thanks to the folks at City Grocery and Ole Miss SID Kyle Campbell hosted us last night down there in the square. I decided to go with red meat for the first time ever. How's that? Out <laughs> That's my goal. Kickoff out of bounds. And so they'll add some yardage out of Kick this off one. out of bounds. Kicking team number 41. The ball be placed at the 35 yard line. So good first field down. position for Georgia Tech and Haynes King, who was a perfect three for three. First time out. Yeah, completely overhauled his mechanics. Look how high he carried the ball at Texas A&M. Makes you stiff and more mechanical, much more in a relaxed position now at Georgia Tech. And watch the stride. Long stride equals long release. Look how long and high that release is when your stride gets elongated. Much quicker, much shorter here. That release is tightening up a little bit, right? You could still tighten it up a little bit more, but that ball's coming out quicker. He's more balanced. That stride is three or four inches shorter, which helps that release get quicker. So he is absolutely committed himself to being more mechanically sound, more relaxed, and it's paying off in some of the accuracy issues, minus that throw that we just saw. Well, first miss of the night. At AM last year, six games, seven touchdowns, six picks. Already seven touchdowns, only one interception through first two plus games this season. I, you know, show how he held the ball at AM. That's not a Haynes King thing as it's much Jimbo as a Jimbo. Thing. Yeah, Jimbo's done that forever, and I was taught that way. You know, my brother back in Jeff Tedford, it was up by the ear, mm -hmm. right? You thought the higher the release, the quicker it got out, or the higher you held it, the quicker it got out. Just not the case. We want more relaxed, fluid throwers in today's offenses, especially when the ball has to come out so quick at different arm angles. You can't do that when the ball is up by your ear. So what does that do in terms of what they can run? Does it change? play calling or schemes well it, it helps him get the ball out quicker so those perimeter throws that they love with their tight ends blocking the quick throws to running backs the RPOs you can change your arm angle like I said so it definitely makes him more dangerous uh, third and seven gets it out in the flat to Haynes who wins a foot race to pick up a Georgia Tech first down it's a gain of 12 Jamal Haynes one of those guys that when they brought in all these SEC receivers had a sit down 
with Buster Faulkner, the offensive coordinator, and he said, hey, how about running back? We need to get a little more explosive in the backfield. I think he can help us out there, and he committed to changing positions, and it's paid off big time. He is a dangerous threat, not just running the ball, but obviously with his background at wide receiver out of the backfield just like that. Pressure from the edge. They throw away from it to Trey Cooley. He gets taken down, and he lost the football, and that's going to cost him a yard or two. Trey Washington in there, and Cooley down on his knees. It's a loss of five. And maybe a loss of Cooley. Injuries piling up for Georgia Tech already here tonight. Remember we saw the Miles Brooks leave on that last possession and the punter David Shanahan got injured as a holder and the blocked field goal on the opening possession. Kudos if you had that on your bingo card. Uh huh. Many times that happens. Hope he saw him walking around out there so hope he's OK. Hopefully Cooley gets up here in a minute as well. Well, it, it, it definitely happened on the landing. Well, yeah, I should say definitely. It seems like it happened on the landing, not on the first hit. First hit definitely jarred that ball out, but yeah. Does look like he kind of landed a little awkward there. It's a great play by Trey Washington. Shot out of a cannon from the secondary. Yeah, hard to tell there. Cooley was one of the best running backs in the state of North Carolina coming out of Nightdale High School outside of Raleigh. Sometimes too when you land that way you can really knock the wind out of you. Yeah. And, and it's I've been there it hurts a ton more than it looks like it should so. Not exactly sure obviously he's in some pain and. Maybe it was just getting the wind knocked out of you or landing awkward on your stomach there but. They're going to need him so. Hopefully he gets checked out and, and get back in this game. You saw that was the punter. Shanahan coming out of the tent with the limp. You see him bottom right of your screen, 43. He's struggling coming out too. That's Tom. not. Yeah, that's not a good sign. No. Irish-born punter. They're the uh, playing a game over in Ireland. Open the season next year. Second of 15. Only a three-man rush. They'll drop eight. King finds a pocket and finds Rutherford, third-year sophomore out of Miami. Second possession for Georgia Tech. The first resulted in a blocked field goal from 43 yards out. And a third down. And third down. This is where Pete Golding will get a little exotic with some pressures. Cedric Johnson just checked back into the game at defensive end number two, their best pass rusher on the outside. A little confusion as personnel runs off late for Ole Miss. Yeah, and they brought Pegues on late. And he was the one that had that big block on the touchdown run. Timeout. And the Rebels will use the timeout. It will be 30 seconds. Looking at a third and eight, and already Georgia Tech three for four on third downs tonight. In honor of Extra Yard for Teachers Week, ESPN is celebrating the role of teachers and their dedication to supporting each student's development inside and outside of the classroom. On behalf of the College Football Playoff Foundation and ESPN, we recognize the passion, commitment, and the work that goes into ensuring students' success. We have a $1,000. Donors choose gift card for Arby Allen and Lafayette Elementary that they can use towards school resources and the students need. Arby Allen is a second grade teacher at Lafayette Elementary School here in Oxford. She started reading with the Rebels, a program where she coordinated getting the student athletes at Ole Miss to come visit the school and spend time with the students, faculty, and staff. Great program. Congrats to Arby Allen and all the folks at Lafayette Elementary. Third down eight. Haynes King shuffles his feet and fires and delivers a strike to Rutherford. A Georgia Tech first down. They're four or five and third down tonight. Now yeah, well, Georgia Tech catches him in a cover two look. What's open there? Middle of the field. You want to attack the space between those two high safeties. Little bender route just around the zone defender underneath. Great play call and a really good throw there by Haynes King. King six of seven to start this game for 48 yards. Rutherford in motion. 
And they swing it out to the tight end, Brett Scyther. And Scyther, who's been an impact player for him, is able to take it for a Georgia Tech first down on a gain of 16. That's the problem with having a mobile quarterback. Monty Montgomery, linebacker number eight, you see right there on your screen. He's got his eyes on Haynes King, thinking Haynes is going to keep it. Tight end grows right across his face from one side to the other. That ends up being his responsibility. They just out leverage him with Scyther there. Georgia Tech driving as the first quarter comes to an end. Jackets need a score to hang in this one after getting whitewashed last year in Atlanta. 10 0 Ole Miss. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. All eyes are on the WNBA this postseason. Pay attention. Oh, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. The stakes have never been higher. Superstars from super teams elevate to new heights. This is incredible. And new contenders make their mark. Oh, Rika is just like, it's what I do. On the W's biggest stage. The moment is here. Who's going to meet it? We're all about the WNBA playoffs. A double dose of Monday Night Football. On ESPN, Carr and the Saints meet Young and the Panthers. On ABC, Chubb and the Browns face Pickett and the Steelers. The Saints-Panthers at 7 on ESPN. Browns-Steelers at 8 on ABC. Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Packed house at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. Ole Miss 2 0. Georgia Tech 1 1. Moments ago, Cole with Brent Key. Coach Key, offense having success moving the ball. What do you see that you'd like to add to it so far? Yeah, I mean, we're doing a good job of getting the ball. Uh, you know, we're getting the ball to the playmakers. The running backs are actually doing a good job, you know, you know, finding some seams, finding the cutbacks on the wide zone right now. Uh, you know, so we're getting the stretch we want on the front side. You know, a couple throws out to the perimeter that we could have had better on. You know, got to sustain some blocks a little bit better on the perimeter. All right, and then we got to start mixing things up a little bit and, uh, you know, and stay in the rhythm on the offense right now. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Michael, thanks. It's Jamal Haynes for the first down carry. And they're staying ahead of schedule here with a pickup of six on first down. And again, another stretch play. Remember, Pete Golding said, we got to make that bounce. Right now, Ole Miss defensive lines are kind of running with the offensive linemen, creating those cutback lanes. See if they change things up. King pulls it back. He's able to fire out to Dylan Leonard. Talking with Golding yesterday, he said, most of the explosive that we get hit with come through the B gap. There's a cavity that can open up there. That's our concern. You can't let the guy change direction on you. And they can set the edge with different guys in terms of stretching it out. No doubt. And they almost said, hey, our five T, our five technique, our defensive tackle, it might look like he's getting stretched. We kind of want that. We want the running back to think he's got the outside and run towards the sideline. Just haven't executed that so far tonight. Another long drive for the Jackets, the 10th play of it. And a straight ahead run and nowhere to go for Jamal Haynes. I was talking to Wes Neighbors, the DB coach for the Ole Miss Rebels before the game, and he was telling me the differences between the Saban defense and kind of Pete Golding's prior defense before he went to Alabama. And the structure of the safeties is what that is and where their run fits are. That's why they want to try to get that run to the perimeter and outside because they have safeties that can come down and run support and help a little bit more often. Uh, get it to flow to the unblock, uh, unblocked linebackers there for Ole Miss. He also said, listen, at Alabama, we had all Americans at every single position. Here's second and goal. Pressure coming, and King has to launch it into the student section. Right off the railing. And that'll leave third and goal. He goes zero that time. Now Jared Ivey just came through unblocked. Left tackle. Thought he had pressure from the outside. Didn't. Haynes did a good job just getting rid of that. You see Ivey just shoot the gap right here. Unblocked. Left tackle. Didn't have eyes on him. Jackets have convit, uh, converted a pair of third downs on this drive. Now it's third and goal. Ball just outside the five. Haynes is the running back. And a timeout taken by Brent Key and Georgia Tech. Play clock was getting late. And he knows this is a key possession of this ball game here early in the second quarter, already down 10. Brent Key 
played at Georgia Tech and was on the previous staff they had made a coaching change he was able to take over he said the first thing I did was loosen some of the rules take a look at what happened with this program last year Jeff Collins was let go after a one and three start he took over and got the job as the new head coach all they did was come out and knock off a pair of top 25 teams on the road North Carolina and Pitt. And I asked him this week, I said, what was the biggest change that you implemented when you took over? And he, he giggled and he said, letting the kids wear earrings around, you know, on the road and getting out of suit jackets and into sweatpants. I said, you're, you're joking. He goes, no, I, I just felt like we wanted to make the main thing the main thing and allow them to focus on who they were instead of worrying about a bunch of rules. Because I was a player, I know what it was like. Third down for Haynes King in Georgia Tech. They get man coverage on the three receivers up top to see if they try to get a rub route. King hands it off. And Jamal Haynes gets stopped after a gain of three. No pass play there it tells me they were thinking four down territory. And so they're going to leave the offense on the field here looking at a fourth and goal. But if I got that same look and I'm Buster Falter, the optic coordinator, I'm thinking I got three receivers up top. Let's get a pick play. Let's let's get a rub route somewhere up top. See if we can't get someone open, especially because all those corners are on the same level up top right now. King looking that way, looking for the route. There it is. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Dominic Blaylock couldn't squeeze it. Thanks to the defense from Dejon Anthony. Missed opportunity for Georgia Tech. Boy, you're going to see a little pick trying to get right here, but number three, Dejon Anthony does a great job of redirecting, passing it off, getting his hand in there, and breaking up a would be touchdown on a big fourth down early. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Football on ESPN Plus, you get the best teams and the biggest conferences, and so much college football action from across the country. So sign up now at ESPNPlus.com. Two empty 12 play drives for Georgia Tech. Jackson Dart and the Rebels have the ball right in front of their student section, trying to come out there. They'll do it with Quinshawn Judkins. Picks up a couple. That leads second and eight. Judkins back to the sideline for the second down. The Miles Brooks, the starting safety, still not on the field for Georgia Tech after he left on the previous possession. On the ground with Bentley. This is Bentley, with your senior at uh, Houston, Texas, by way of SMU. Look to carry. Third and short. Pressure up the middle. And they get rid of it to the edge. Good enough for a first down. A spin by Jordan Watkins. And then it gets taken down after a pickup of about 14. 
Trey Harris out. Jordan Watkins, really one of the go-to guys here for Jackson Dart. Love this. Kind of spread everybody out. Went two by two, four wide. Motion Ulysses Bentley out of the backfield. Let Jackson Dart see it all. And there's that empty formation. And Dart off to the races. Jackson Dart to the outside, needing a block. And he takes it all the way down inside the 10. That is a 67-yard scamper for Ole Miss, and it's quarterback Jackson Dart. Once again, spread him out a little bit, right? Spread him out, play small ball, quick little throw, then you spread him out and let your mobile quarterback run against no linebackers in the box. Actually got a great block from Jordan Watkins, who caught that, play, that pass on the previous play. I think Dart might need to catch his breath. He's over 100 yards rushing. On just six carries. He's breathing hard. He is. And so they'll hand it off to Bentley. This is Bentley picks up a couple. Jackson Dart has outgained Georgia Tech two to one so far tonight. Half as many carries. There's that run game that we were clamoring for, right? For three nationally last year, and the first two were triple options. So pretty much they were the best rushing attack yeah. in the entire country last year. On second and goal. Dark to fire, and it's batted away. Coverage on the back end by Miles Sims. Omar Daniels got in the back end. Nice little RPO here. This is a decision Jackson can make at the line of scrimmage. It's a called run play. All those linebackers suck up. Just right in the passing lane was Daniels. Third and goal. After the turnover on downs, Ole Miss threatening to stretch this thing here in the second quarter. Stop Georgia Tech on fourth down pride. Play clock got to zero. No flag. Dart looking. Survey. Now floating, and will throw it out of bounds. And so after that long Jackson Dart run, to settle for a field goal, Lane Kiffin wanted a hold. Turned into a scramble drill, and there was a collision in the end zone. That took down an Ole Miss receiver. There's no foul on the play. So the edge of a player downfield. The ball landed out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. The flag was for ineligible and has been ruled incidental contact. Yeah, watch this. Just drop eight from Georgia Tech. So right as he's trying to make a decision, there's nowhere to throw. He's got eight sets of eyes on him. Really good coverage by Georgia Tech. And just no one able. There's a lineman pretty far downfield there, though. Yeah, Caleb Warren just wandered. Fourth down. Ole Miss is perfect on fourth down this season. Four for four. Dart fires in zone and off the hands of his tight end, Michael Trigg. In an empty possession for Ole Miss, both teams denied on fourth and goals on each of the last two possessions. And a great call and a great throw by Jackson Dart to Trigg in the back of the end zone. A hair behind, but that's something that he's got to bring down. And so a failed fourth down is still 10 nothing. Ole Miss. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Tap water. How come? Well, because... Whoa. All eyes are on the WNBA this postseason. Superstars elevate to new heights on the W's biggest stage. The moment is here. We're all about the WNBA playoffs. Wow. 
some unexpected results today. Georgia Tech has come up empty on each of its first two drives, but it wasn't for lack of effectiveness early. Two very long drives, and one ended in a blocked field goal. And the most recent ended with a turnover on downs. Rutherford in motion. A little stutter step in the backfield for Jamal Haynes. He's able to pick up five. First drive was the uh, blocked field goal. Led to an Ole Miss touchdown. That was a 12 play, 50 yard drive. Nothing to show for it. Then 13 plays and 63 yards. Who sings both times? Yeah, one thing we haven't seen really from either offense, but especially Georgia Tech, no deep shots. And that's one of the things that Haynes, even transferring at Texas AM, he was really good at that then, still good at it now. Some point, one of these teams is going to have to test the opposing defense. And we'll hand it off again to Jamal Haynes. It's going to set up third and short, looks like. King in the opener against Louisville threw for 313 and three touchdowns. It was the most ever in a Georgia Tech debut. Third and short, and Haynes King will keep it for a first down. This Georgia Tech offense was at its best in the second quarter of the Louisville game. Scored 28 points. It was the most in a quarter versus an FBS opponent since 2014. It was a four touchdown performance to race an early Louisville lead, but then Cardinals beat up on an injured Georgia Tech secondary in the second half. Ended up losing 39 34 in the opener. Racing what was a 28 to 13 lead. It's a stretch and nothing doing for Trey Cooley. We'll see him back on the field. Kilo Stone, the Georgia Tech transfer, one of many on this Ole Miss roster, coming up to make the stop. And actually, Ladarius Tennyson, really good job there, blitzing through the A gap, forcing that to bounce just a little bit and allow his linebackers to clean it up. On second and ten, all over the middle, and that's complete and good for a first down to Christian Leary. He's an Alabama transfer. That's a gain of 12. Yeah, we mentioned this offense was completely rebuilt from the ground up. No Chase Lane tonight, who's the Texas A&M transfer. Really, they're one of their best receivers on the outside, but Christian Leary, as well as Dominic Blaylock, the Georgia transfer. There's SEC talent on the on, on the outside for Georgia Tech. You mentioned speed earlier in the game, Jordan. Brinkey telling me that was his number one emphasis when he took over the job. King keeps it, cuts back inside, and a great run by Haynes King will be right at the marker for a first down. And they'll say, move the chain. Yeah, just a zone read here. End is going to crash. This linebacker has got to get a little wider there. Ladarius Tennyson gets his eyes caught inside. He's got to be wider, right? Pegues is crashing. That means he takes the running back. Linebacker's got to replace. They call that scraping the backside. Just got caught too far inside, and Haynes King found a lane. And the freshman left tackle Ethan McKinney ended up nine yards down the field helping Haynes King at the end of that run. He's an Atlanta native out of Marietta. And a big hit on Trey Cooley from Perkins. So Taron Perkins only played seven snaps against Tulane after nine tackles in the opener against Mercer. Wow. Pete Golden thinking we'll see more of him tonight based on what they're going to run. Yeah, see, he's too athletic, too talented to keep him off the field. In high school, kind of as a see ball, get ball guy. So he's just catching up to concepts and reading offenses. But I tell you what, he's going to continue to find ways to get him on the field because the athleticism, the instincts are there. Exactly what you saw in that last play. Second and eight. King over the middle again for a first down. This is Dylan Leonard, and he's still rumbling inside the 40 for a gain of 23 for 10. Boy, just caught him again in a two safety look. You're going to see 16 go to the field at the right side of your screen. That bender comes back across. Anytime you see that cover two, we call that a bender. That seam route in the middle, that's where you want to go as a quarterback. Great job there by Dylan Leonard of getting across that safety's face, allowing the quarterback to throw a safe ball to the middle of the field. And officials 
Top of the plate looks like Georgia Tech out, wants. Oh, they got a chain issue. Out, hmm. They got those fancy new chains out there. We're talking about it. The down markers are digital, right? And it even tells you on one of them, it tells you right there. It tells you how many yards you got to the first down. By the way, even the even even the boxes uh, branded come to the sip. Never. They what never do you miss think? It. I kind of I kind of like the old school ones. Not I, I just want the chain to be attached to the stick. Yeah. That's all I want. I, I don't care. Look, what, what's crazy? We're getting more technical, right? We've got video screens now, but we're still using the, a chain link at yeah, the we, bottom of that. We so, need to get GPS involved. Yeah. What are we doing here? Chip the ball. Let's move on. Well, they got backpack air conditioners down here for the kids. Yeah. I mean, we are pretty much living in the future, and we're still using. Look, I mean, it's that's just a chain. You can either wrap some tires with it or connect it to a couple sticks and tell you what's 10 yards and not. There's a backpack air conditioners. Cole had his eye on. Cole, why don't you why don't you put one of those on and walk around? Well, Georgia Tech and Ole Miss were conference mates for 30 years. Only played once when Tech was in the SEC. So let's give you a little history lesson. Realignment has been around forever. Originally 13 members in the Southeastern Conference in 1933. Swanee said, no, nah, we're not sure this is for us. 1939, they bounce, and Georgia Tech and Tulane, not far behind in the 60s, decided to leave. So 92, Carolina and Arkansas came in, and then Missouri and AM joined in 2012, and of course, Texas and Oklahoma coming in next year. Back to back. Former SEC opponents for Ole Miss. How about that? Went down to Tulane last week, and now they get Ole Miss here tonight. Here's a little history lesson for you with Tech in the SEC. 30 seasons, won five conference titles from 33 to 63. Ole Miss, charter member, of course, in its 90th season, six conference titles for the Rebels. I love these interconference games. I love the fact that they played last year. I'm, I'm just. You can kind of see the writing on the wall. Nine games in conference is not far away for either yep. the ACC or the SEC. Georgia Tech already has the built in rivalry with Georgia at the end of the season. Probably more South Carolina states in their future and fewer Ole Misses in their future. Just yeah. just a guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a give and take, right? We're going to get more frequent big time in conference matchups, but yes, you're going to lose some of the traditional non conference matchups, former SEC matchups. Oh, traditional, like. Like Cal at Boston yeah. College. That's not. That's not. That doesn't. That sounds weird. It does. Sound By the way, they fixed the chain with some tape, so <laughs> we're good, guys. <laughs> Wait, uh, is it still ten yards, that's or is a it? Great question. Nine and a half. King pressured. Fires downfield, and it is incomplete. What an effort by Avery Boyd. Boy, Ladarius Tennyson again blowing through the A gap, providing a little pressure, causing this ball to float just a little bit. But man, that should have been brought down by Avery Boyd. That's a jump ball. Just throw it up, let your receiver make a play. Mm. But again, it was the pressure caused Haynes King to move. That ball hung a little bit more than he wanted to. It's the second time, and I think. Just a few plays that they've got aggressive blitzing through the A gap. Tenth play of the drive. And blown up in the backfield. It's a loss of one. DeAndre Prince making his 18th consecutive start tonight. Boy, heck of a play here by Prince. It was great talking to him yesterday. He said, look, in this new defense, I've had four different coaches, but now I'm paying more attention to the run game. Mm -hmm. Usually I've just been watching receivers, talking concepts. It paid off there. Tech five of seven on third down tonight. This is their longest though. Play clock at five. It's at one. He's got a hurry. It went to zero and they hand it off on a third and 12 and get enough blocking to spring up for the first down. Great vision by Jamal Haynes. Gain of 15. Excellent job by Connor Scott Leon pulling around from that right tackle spot, getting the kick out block, creating the space there. A lot of zone that we've seen so far for Georgia Tech. There you go, gap scheme, get a couple defenders upfield. Jordan's mentioned how that pressure's been coming between the A and B gaps. 
Nice call there by Buster. Well, the perfect call. They had a one technique and then a wide nine. I mean, there was there was nobody there from guard to tackle. Fresh set of downs and a huge hole again for Jamal Haynes. And he's going to be just short of the first down, but second and less than one coming for Georgia Tech. A little less duct tape. That might have been a first down. You're starting to see the effects of that outside zone, that stretch play, right? Linebackers right now are just sprinting towards the sideline, and that time it wasn't stretch. That one hit the B gap and found that crease. For the 13th play of the drive, third possession tonight for Georgia Tech. First two have come up empty. King hands it off. They get the first down behind the legs of Jamal Haynes. Two and a half and rolling towards the end of the half. New clock rules does not stop for a first down outside of two minutes. How imperative for Georgia Tech is getting a score on this drive. Oh, it's huge. I mean, they're going to get the ball at halftime as well because Ole Miss won the toss and elected to receive. But they'd love to double up here and change this game. Well, they're getting a break to talk about it because uh, change busted oh again. Oh, my gosh. They don't have a backup somewhere in a shed. They, they've got guys running to the shed right now. They're, they're right there. Yeah, that's where we're going. Put the reliever in. He's laying there on the side. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Look, Mom, I found one. Oh, yeah, you did. But we need an ATM from our bank, unless you want to spend a small fortune in fees. <laughs> no, thank you. Banking with BMO means more fee-free ATMs than the two largest U.S. banks combined, including places like pharmacies and grocery stores. Saving money and more convenient. <laughs> Look at you being so helpful. What'd you expect? You're standing at a help stop. That's you. <laughs> that's me, at a desk. When a bank helps you get and stay ahead, that's the BMO effect. A double dose of Monday Night Football. On ESPN, Carr and the Saints meet Young and the Panthers. On ABC, Chubb and the Browns face Pickett and the Steelers. Saints-Panthers at 7 on ESPN. Browns-Steelers at 8 on ABC. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Connecting homes across the SEC. Went back to basics with the old school chain, but it wasn't as easy as it seemed. It came out of the box like Clark Griswold's Christmas lights. And finally, untangled and ready to go. First and ten for Georgia Tech. And a nice spin move by Trey Cooley. Remember Cooley earlier this game had to leave the game due to an injury, but I think as you surmise, probably not as serious as it seemed. Our guy's ready to go. No duct tape needed here. That's well, a maybe a little bit. <laughs> That's a lesson, right? That's what you get for trying new fangled technology. Just roll the foam numbers and the sticks out there and let's play ball. 15th play of the third possession for the Ramblin' Red. Shot to the end zone. Caught, but was he out of bounds? He was. Eric Singleton was just a step out. Singleton, the true freshman, filling in for Chase Lane. That's great coverage by Zamari Walton. All right, sidelines your best friend in man coverage when they're trying to go over the top. You can still get a first down inside the two on third and nine. King is the out route. Blown up! Wow, what a hit! There's Zamari Walton putting Malik Rutherford on his back. It'll leave fourth down, and they're going to leave the offense on the field. But first, this knock. Wow, this is great. It's really the vision that he has. He's got a tight end over him. He's like, I don't think this guy's threatening me vertical. I'm going to keep my eyes inside. It just absolutely blows that up. Is that a second? This is a great job, too, of leading with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's an easy play to get a targeting foul on. Great back-to-back -back plays by Zamari Walton. So fourth and three, and Ole Miss uses a timeout here. And this is really interesting for Brent Key. They've had two long drives and come up empty both times. There's a minute 13 left in the game. And now the question is, 
do you take the three or do you leave the offense on the field down 10. I think you take the three because you get the ball after half as well yeah. right Ole Miss would get the ball with a chance with a minute left but I'll throw a wrinkle in there. OK their holder is injured got injured on the block field goal got to go to a backup holder and it may not seem like much to many. Oh, I used to be a holder. Decision? It's not that complicated okay. for a chip right, shot like enough. this. It, it's a more complicated when it's a long field goal. The angle, the tilt. Now they've had kicking woes all season. They're on their second kicker, and that one was blocked. And now that was their second possession of the game, or probably their first. David Shanahan is the punter and the holder. And they warmed up a backup holder. Now they have Shanahan indeed out there, even though he's injured. 22-yard chip shot. For Aiden Burr. And Burr wins this duel. Finally, Georgia Tech is on the board. A long possession to catch in after 17 plays and 90 yards. The vehicle is all electric, the feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. Mm, so many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. This won't do well at auction, but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. <laughs> Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Everyone gets a free new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 with a Galaxy phone trade in any year, any condition. Superb racing. Yes, guys. How about them? How about, and they hate field goals. Hate them, <laughs> guys. All right. Well, thanks, fellas. See you in 69 seconds. Nice. Here's Bentley from just outside the five, full head of steam. And he takes it up past the 30. Jackson Dart doing his best John Rice Plumley impersonation tonight. Yeah, I mean, we came in raving about his ability to throw the football this year, and he just got back to fundamental. He's like, no, nah, look, I'm an athlete too. What he mentioned to us yesterday, he really wanted to start focusing on taking what the defense is giving you. And right now, they're giving him lanes to run the football, and he's taking advantage of it. And what a difference a game makes for this Ole Miss team. Lane Kiffin saying, you know, we'd love to be more balanced, but we've got to take what we're getting and what they're getting tonight is on the ground, 143 yards versus only 89 last week down in New Orleans. Three-man rush and a dump over the middle. Quinshawn Judkins who picks up a pair. Good sign for Ole Miss with Alabama on deck that Judkins is healthy enough to go tonight. No doubt. And also of note, you know, the passing numbers for Dart, not spectacular, but also Trey Harris, not in the lineup. So the best receiver out. Ball tipped and incomplete. Offensive line held nicely. That's Pomawala. And leave third and eight. That really good job by 13 here. Moala just reading the eyes of Jackson Dart, getting underneath that, getting a paw on it. Really not much there. On third and eight. Dart over the middle. That's caught for an Ole Miss first down to Jordan Watkins. You can see the impact that Dart's run game has had on what Georgia Tech is doing by keeping a close eye on him when he's in the pocket even. Yeah, no doubt. Those linebackers are heavy footed. They know they give him too much space. He's going to take off. Now they send five and Dart fires to the stick and incomplete. Coverage by Miles Sims on Dayton Wade. And 24 seconds left here. Still do have a timeout. So can attack the middle of the field. Again, they'd love to even just get a field goal here. With Georgia Tech getting the ball after half. On second and ten, Dart steps up and didn't slide. He took a hit. On his way to pick it up eight. And a timeout taken by Ole Miss. 
And that'll stop the clock with 15 seconds left in the half. Again, just Georgia Tech dropping into deep coverage. He's a good job of going. If I can pick up eight to ten, then we're about ten yards away from field goal range. Well, this is an offensive line that has been much maligned and taking a lot of the blame for the lack of an effective run game through the first two games. Michael Pettis owned up to it this week. Yesterday's performance wasn't up to my standards. I'll own it. It won't happen again, which begs the question, Cole. We can see bad games from wide receivers with drops or quarterbacks when they're off. Can offensive linemen have bad games? Absolutely. You, you get beat inside early in the game or you get a speed rush to beat you early in the game time. It's in your head. And then all of a sudden it forces you to set in a different way. So maybe you get a little bit too vertical or you get a little bit too wide. And when you do that, it might not be the correct set for how that individual is lined up. But you're trying to stop the move that got you earlier. Somebody's bull rushed you a couple times. You're going to set a little bit heavier. And if they come at you with a speed rush, obviously you're going to be done. So, yes, mentally, you can go out there and just have a bad game, especially if something doesn't go your way early on. And a draft pick up there, Nick Broker, in the heart of that offensive line last year. Now third and two. And but it really looked like Aiden Williams wasn't committed to that route. That was weird. Yeah, it didn't look like he thought it was going in his direction here. They motioned to get a four by one, four receivers to the field, single up Williams' backside. And oh, I guess he, maybe the ball just surprised him. Yeah, I think he was just trying to create a little more separation there. Thought maybe it would come one step later. Well, they have high hopes for Aiden Williams, and this is a very talented Ole Miss right receiving core. They're going to go for it on fourth down. We mentioned Trey Harris, who's got five touchdowns already for two games and is out tonight. We hope to have him back next week against Bama. And Brett Key's going to use the timeout. timeout. Georgia Tech. It's their second. Miss looking at a fourth and two with 10 seconds left in the half. Lane Kiffin talking it over Charlie Wise Jr. this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. All state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. A common theme in our meeting with the offensive staff yesterday, both with Kiffin and Charlie Wise Jr. and Jackson Dart, is that Lane Kiffin is the ultimate offensive scientist. He will draw up a play that they've never run before. In fact, they had a play last year that was brand new, and as the offense looked to the sideline, the signaler had to signal in to each and every skill position player what their role was going to be, just like making it up on the fly. And, and Dart said, Hey, man, he probably hits them better than 50% of them, but it's not perfect. No, but that's what makes him special and a scary play caller. You show something on defense, he's going to dial something up to attack it no matter what, even if it's not a play they've ran forever or not a play that they've ever ran. He's like, this route will work if we do this, and he'll go for it. Fourth and two, 10 seconds to play in the half. Dart scrambles. He's got the first down clock with stop to... Reset the chain. Yeah, they're going to have to hurry up to spike this. Boy, and that's a really good job by Jackson Dart. Needed to get to at least the 39 there with the career long field goal of 56. They got a couple more yards than that. Yeah, Davis knocked that through in the fourth quarter against Tulane. It's already made from 47. This will be from 54. That was the fourth longest in program history last week against the Green Wave. Nice comeback for Ole Miss to stay perfect on the season. Got a hand on it, and it comes up well short. So both teams have blocked a field goal tonight, and what a huge difference a year makes. Last year, Ole Miss. Shut out Georgia Tech 42 nothing Lane Kiffin's team only 10 points on the board here and the Jackets getting penetration and a leap Zeke Biggers there got his big paw on that one that dude can get up for 333 pounds coming up the half live performance of the pride of the south on SEC Network Plus you can start streaming now on the ESPN app Cole is with Lane. Coach, how responsible is Quinchon Judkins' presence in the success you've had with quarterback run in the first half? Well, I think they play on it, but we got to finish drives. We don't get many drives. We only had three till the last two minutes there, and 
when you got a fourth and goal from the five and you know quarterback makes a good play we got to make a play so that was really discouraging and then them drive the length of the field to get a field goal really took the game from 17 nothing and now we got ourselves in a game Georgia Tech having some success with the stretch play what, what was the answer to slow that down. Yeah, we just got to play faster and hit the blocks better at linebacker. Thanks, Coach. All right. Well, Lane Kiffin not getting what he has wanted. The drop pass in the back of the end zone on Michael Trigg. It's certainly a big mistake for Ole Miss. 10-3 at the break. Let's get you to the studio. Here's Dari. Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Back house at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium here in Oxford, Mississippi. And well, we got a ball game. This is Georgia Tech offense. Chris Wanky coaching up Haynes King. Got turned over on downs at the goal line. So Jackson Dart's offense had the same thing happen. He's 90. Big run was one of the big plays you'll miss in the first half. He's over 100. Hey, everybody, Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Coles down on the field. What do you want to see more of or even less of in the second half? Well, I want to see both these teams figure out how to punch it in in the red zone, right? Points left on the board. I think for Ole Miss, balancing a little bit of the run in the pass, right? I mean, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it, yeah. right? Jackson Dart's running all over the place, but they've been so good throwing the football. I know Trey Harris is out. But I'd like to see them toss it around a little bit more. But on the ground, he's been absolutely fantastic. Broke the really long run down the field to set up a score right here, punching it in. But again, those red zone woes, the drop on the outside by Michael Trigg, left points on the board. This could be a 17-3 ball game if not for that drop. And Lane was not happy about that in the moment and at halftime either. We've seen Lane toss his call sheet before, but uh, usually it's not in a fit of rage. It's going up after him. He's drawn up the perfect play, and he may have there. This didn't do it. Fair catch called for. Read and React is taking the college football world by storm every Monday at 7 p.m. Cole's the star. Cole, let's read and react to his first half. Not the star. That would be Roman Harper, obviously. One of the plays we talked to Pete Golding about was the stretch play. Now, Ole Miss runs it. Georgia Tech runs it as well. The aiming point for the back going to be out here by the H-back outside the offensive tackle. Here's the beauty. When we said earlier in the broadcast it can hit anywhere, watch the stretch play from Georgia Tech that's going to aim here and hits behind the backside tackle. Look at the flow of the defense. Jordan mentioned earlier in the game. They want that overflow. Then you get the cutback lane. Why the stretch is such a dangerous play, why so many offenses are built around it, it can hit anywhere. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the SEC Network, read and react. Here's King. And he gets forward for another positive run. Georgia Tech averaging five yards of carry on the ground. King gets a little bit better than average. Remember Ole Miss won the toss, elected to receive. So the Tech's getting it to start the second half. Over 100 yards on the ground for this Georgia Tech offense. The only FBS program in the country in the top 20 in passing offense and rushing offense coming into this weekend. King on play action, little boot, fires back across just off the mark. He was trying to find Georgia transfer Dominic Blaylock. Dominic I think the first target for Blaylock there, the former five star. 31 games over four seasons for Georgia before coming to the flats. That's be a huge third down for Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin mentioned it. Only four possessions in the first half. Possessions are going to be at a premium, so they could get a stop here. That would be huge. 12, 13, and 17 play drives for Georgia Tech in the first half. King scrambling. And he's got the first down with his legs again, and he slides past the 40. A nine-yard scramble, and the third down success continues for the Ramblin' Red. Well, that's just what makes him so dangerous. When the play breaks down, and Pete Golding even mentioned it, we need to have a balanced rush. He called it a four-spoke rush. We need to keep lane integrity because if you give Time him out. a sliver of grass, he's going to take it, especially as that play breaks down. They are booing the chain gang, as they should. <laughs> Not having their best game. What are we doing, guys? What is, what is happening? We are now on the third string chain. Chain tryouts coming up. Boy, I don't even know if I have notes on the third chain. Right, walk on. Right? He's, he's a hustle player. Scout team. Yeah, really intelligent. Works hard. 
Loves the game. Loves the game. Just a little short on chain. <laughs> <laughs> First stringer came in, was reading his own clippings. Got really excited. A little rat poison. I mean, this does give me just a moment to try to get this grease out of my suit pants. Yeah, you had you had a mistake. You had a bad you know, mistake. Burgers in the press box. I was trying to pick out the right one, and the grease splattered from the tray. And I, someone handed me some some shout wipes. So yeah. um, I can't imagine though it could make that suit any uglier. Well, you know what? I don't like your tie, <laughs> even though I picked it out. That's right. Just kidding, I like your tie. Here we go. Just stop by Hinton and Hinton. Before I leave town. First and ten for Georgia Tech. King. Well, hesitation. That game won't miss time to flow, and it's a backwards play for Jamal Haynes, a loss of four. Oh, it's a great job here. Play is going to go to the outside, and again, we've talked about how this stretch play, or just a toss getting on the edge, has really caused problems. But Trey Washington, great job of setting that edge from the secondary. Cole mentioned this scheme, those secondary players are depended on. King flushed and still nearly had a play downfield to Christian Leary. And it leaves third and 14. I, I wish you guys could see this is amazing multitasking that Jordan is doing, both dry cleaning a suit and calling a game at the same time. Yeah, it's called talent, Tom. <laughs> Although I might be better at cleaning my suit than calling the game, but Georgia Tech has converted on seven of the ten third downs tonight. Three man rush. King. Got pressured with only three. Escapes, sets up, couldn't pull the trigger, and he gets taken down in the backfield. Perry Coleman finally got him. It's a loss of three. Boy, Cedric Johnson does a great job of just getting vertical. You're going to see him move inside, and he just rushes the left guard here. Forces Haynes King to move, almost brings him down there. But again, that play was broken and over once Cedric Johnson forced Haynes King out of the pocket. Coverage was great. And now Georgia Tech punting for the first time tonight. David Shanahan got injured on that blocked field goal earlier. He's been limping around and just a one step kick. And if you didn't know he was injured, you wonder why that looked like that. But a 39 yarder. Great given the circumstances for Shanahan. When we return, Jackson Dark will have the ball in his hands again. He's already run for 118 yards so far tonight. Well, this is first possession, second half coming up. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes Benz. With the Venture X card from Capital One, you earn two times miles on every purchase. The noise canceling. You're being too loud. Good choice. Ooh, my lucky number. Plus, earn five times miles on flights <laughs> and ten times miles oh. on hotels through Capital One Travel. What's in your wallet? A double dose of Monday Night Football. On ESPN, Carr and the Saints meet Young and the Panthers. On ABC, Chubb and the Browns face Pickett and the Steelers. Saints-Panthers at 7 on ESPN. Browns-Steelers at 8 on ABC. Yes, guys. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet, connecting homes across the SEC. So look, Jordan, we're not the only ones wearing makeup. And Jackson Dart going with the face paint, as is his tradition. He got the idea when he was like eighth grade watching an LSU game. So one guy with one eye black patch on loved it dart in trouble shovels it out Judkins keeps his feet he's past midfield and a 25 yard gain on an ad lib by Jackson dart 
Boy, this is so good. Hits the back of his drop, has a little pressure, decides to escape, runs into trouble, and just goes, oh, there's my check down. A little uh, Patrick Mahomes-esque. Was that a bust in the backfield too, Jordan? I'm sure if the back went the right way and he was still able to sort of ad lib out of that and get a positive play. Yeah, typical offensive lineman blaming the running back for protection. <laughs> totally. No, actually, stick, looking at it right now. Stick the ball out for air. It doesn't always seem like it works that way. K.J. Wallace is the injured yellow jacket transfer from Notre Dame. Played for Mike Muschamp and Love it in Atlanta. Will's brother. And they're looking at his left side. Well, we're talking about Jackson Dart and the face paint that he employs. Goes back years, as I mentioned, Josh Reed played at LSU and had that eye black that he wore. And that gave him an idea. And he's also a big Star Wars fan. Wallace on his feet. And we asked him about it before. He's like, yeah, why not rock a little Anakin Skywalker? Not bad. He goes, in, in, in addition to that, I'm right eye dominant. So why do I need any eye black for the left? I, right eye dominant. You buying that? He's looking at me like I'm crazy. He's the one that said it. Why are you looking at me? All like I can say when he's got that face paint on, I'm not going to underestimate his power. <laughs> and I hope Georgia Tech doesn't either. That's a Star Wars quote, Tom. Very good. Luke. That ain't it. Oh. Well, you go to the most basic one oh, ever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got nothing else? I'm old school. By the way, there's a Lando movie coming out. Jabba Nobata. <laughs> First and ten. And Jenkins taken down. Behind the line of scrimmage, it's a loss of two. It's really good penetration from the backside, at actually just pushing that run towards the sideline. Dart pulls it back to the seam, and it's good for a first down after a juggle by Jordan Watkins. No, I love this. You look to the sideline, Lane Kiffin sees they're going to bring pressure off that edge. So let's just motion Jordan Watkins in, and let's replace that blitzing linebacker. Great play call. Dart with the scramble now, and he gets wrestled to the ground by Cal Kennard. Had a huge game last week for Tech. Second down. Second and seven. Bentley cuts it back up and a burst into the end zone for Ole Miss and a 21 yard touchdown run. We'll strike up the band in a moment as the Rebels await the point after. Five plays, 71 yards for 219. And Caden Davis for the point after. Punches it through. By some great blocking up front by the offensive line. But this split zone motion really pulls the backside linebacker. Watch this tight end come across. And this backside linebacker is going to go with him. And that's exactly where that run's going to end up hitting. He would have been there, but he's following that tight end. So a great job of dressing that run play up, pulling defenders out of the way, and Ole Miss punches it in. Takes a 17-3 lead. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. With no fees or minimums, 
and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> Even easier than this. We need a clutch hit. Derek. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? The Little League World Series champions! Well, Knox Kiffin is leading the party on the sideline, and what a party it is after Ole Miss extended the lead. And you want to be a coach's son? You get all the accoutrement. Jackson Dark presenting him with the Ole Miss Boba Fett helmet pregame. And that's pretty good life. Not bad, huh? Not bad. That's pretty fun. You think Lane ever did that on the sideline with any of his dad's teams? I don't think they celebrated that way. <laughs> you don't think Monty's team? You know, running the Tampa two, get a big pick. Not sure Monty was Lane a on big the shoulder turnover chain guy <laughs> or fire extinguisher thing on the sideline. Oh, probably not. Probably not. Both damn good coaches, though. That's right. Do you have a Boba Fett helmet? I don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Always wanted one of the Chewbacca ones where the mouth was like motorized. You ever see that? That lady that went viral with that thing? Hans King has had a pretty good night. That one is blown up once again, trying to get it out to Trey Cooley, and Trey Washington was all over it. It's a loss of five. Yeah, I think we're really seeing the effect of not having Chase Lane out there. Just don't think Georgia Tech feels they have the playmakers to take those shots downfield. And so as they continue to work the perimeter in the run game, this Ole Miss defense just keeps coming further down and further down, playing heavier footed. I want to follow up on that term. Another stop at the line of scrimmage. When you say they're playing heavy footed, what does that tell? They're just sitting waiting, right? You're not going to get into your back pedal immediately when everything's been happening in front of you, right? So they're first going to see, I'm going to take a step forward, attack the line of scrimmage, and then, oh, if they're coming vertical, then I'll back up as opposed to, let's get depth and see what happens. I've been heavy footed my entire life. Third and 15. It's the gout. <laughs> Could be. Red on red with Ketcha. Ames King with a check. Now let his own line know. Ole Miss, too. They showed pressure, then checked out of it. Oh, well, unless. Kari Coleman might still come. Yeah, he's going to come. Oh, no, he didn't. King will option him and scrambles and takes a hit on the slide. He is down where the slide starts, which costs him a couple of yards. And he'll have to. That's the chess match, right? When you look to the sideline. Coleman was going to blitz and then they checked out of it and right where Georgia Tech ended up going but remember still Pete, a good stop on third remember guys Pete Golding told us too when you change the picture on Haynes King you invite him to run he said we're okay with that so that cat and mouse game as you mentioned Jordan may have forced the run that Pete said they're okay with no doubt a funky little formation here See all these guys up top yeah, they're going to fake it, it. And it's incomplete. Georgia Tech wanted a hold on the up back in the backfield. That's the tight end. And Avery Boyd with the throw. Remember Georgia Tech playing with an injured putter and on the road. And they try to get creative and nothing happened. Yeah, try a little direct snap to the up back. And they're going to try to get the tight end the ball here across the line of scrimmage. But Perkins does a great job of snipping that out, getting hands on him. Maybe a little tug, but got hands on him. It was more than a tug. Well, he's probably got a. He's got something. He's pointing up the video board. I understand why he's mad. There's less contact on the library dance floor last night. That's a bummer. Uh huh. And so another turnover on downs. Georgia Tech came into this game heavy underdogs. Got beat. Soundly in this game last year, Brett Key obviously knows 
at some point they were going to have to take some chances. And that missed call cost them what would have been a first down on the fake punt. Which on Judkins with the run, it's a gain of seven. Well, if I'm Lane Kiffin and Charlie Weiss Jr., I'm feeling really good about how my offensive line is moving people right now. Judkins picks up a yard. Third and two coming up. They're getting a hat on hat. Getting push. And that was the storyline coming in, right? I mean, what happened to this Ole Miss running game? Nothing. It's still there. Well, it's... Stick with what's working, which is what Ole Miss did through first two games of the season, both wins and a QB run for a first down. And Georgia Tech was slow to get up. But Micaiah Scott's going to stay in the game. Uh, first and ten. Here's Bentley. Trying to turn the corner. First down and to the pylon. Out at the one. 16 yard first down run. Ulysses Bentley. And he's provided a one two punch with Judkins. Yeah, and really the first block that sprung it was by Dayton Wade on a crack block. The wide receiver getting a linebacker to open up the edge for Bentley. Would have been a touchdown run for Bentley, but we got a whistle and stoppage before and movement to be the first for Offense. either side tonight. Offense, number 88, five yard penalty, remains first down. Kyron Heath, the tight end, moved when Ole Miss tried to go tempo. Yeah, I think it wasn't a jump. I think he was turning like he thought he was going to shift sides or maybe get. Some information from Jackson. Either way, it'll back him up five. Rebels trying to extend the lead after they busted up the fake punt. They got great field position. Dart aiming for the goal line. He's got it. Touchdown, Rebels. Second rushing touchdown of the night. And he's got the dance moves to show it. All this Ole Miss run game needed was. More dart. Kane Davis for the point after. And it's a 24 to 3 lead for Ole Miss. And they're rolling now. Big run by Ulysses Bentley to get him down inside the five yard line. And now watch 24 lead blocking here for Jackson Dart. Big block, bam, right at the goal line. And Ole Miss is rolling. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes Benz. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. Mm, so many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. <laughs> this won't do well at auction, but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. <laughs> Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Everyone gets a free new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 with a Galaxy phone trade-in. Any year, any condition. Football is back. Got your new fantasy team name? Check. Grill? Check. Fancy Grill? Check. Troy and Joe? Check. Bro and Bro? Check. All the emotions? All season long? Check, baby. Six minutes of play in the third at Bought Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Rebels have won 27 in the last 28 home non conference games, and looks like Jackson Darton has him on pace to do it again. Third career 100 yard rush game. It's coming only 11 carries, two touchdowns on the ground for Dart. A high kick. Be taken at the six. 
And a turn to the edge for Jamal Haynes before being forced out of bounds. Let's take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Might be a little young for it, but that's all right. Well, thank you, Kappas. What a beautiful weekend here in Oxford. Can't beat it. Haynes King suffered through a dirty jersey here tonight. A little touch pass and trying to get Christian Leary to the edge. What have you seen overall from King tonight? Especially, I'm asking you, because relative to what you saw from him at Texas A&M. Well, I don't think he's had his best night, right? I think he's been a little more accurate some of the intermediate. But at A&M, he did thrive in pushing the ball downfield. And Georgia Tech just hasn't done that tonight. I figured they'd dial something up for Christian Leary or one of the guys to try to stretch the field at some point with how aggressive Ole Miss is being on the perimeter, playing their safeties low, kind of just daring Georgia Tech to try it. And they just a, haven't. There's been a big time transition for King coming to play for Brent Key and moving to the big city of Atlanta. He said, I had to learn how traffic was paced, but one of the things he found early on was Mary Max T room. Atlanta staple. He said, I might eat there every day. Here comes pressure up the middle. King to the outside. That's good. And it's good for the first down. Next time you're in town, we're going fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and Mary Max. Yeah, just keep me away from the grease tray hamburger. Yeah, and I'll be good. Well, as long as you don't wear that suit again, we'll all be good. First and 10 for Georgia Tech. Did you tell how excited I got about Mary Max when King you did. mentioned it on the call? Is that good, huh? Legend. A little spin and a gain of six for Jamal Haynes at a Grayson High School up in Loganville, Georgia. Long storied history at a Grayson. State champions a couple years ago and an injured player up front. It's like Jordan Williams, who made his 19th consecutive start on the offensive line for Georgia Tech tonight. A couple of years ago, during the COVID year, he started opening game as a true freshman coming out of Gainesville High School in Georgia. Mm. He kind of got his legs taken out from under him by an Ole Miss defender, I believe, or friendly fire. On this stretch play. C54 there just behind the running back. And I think Cedric Johnson, yeah, I think his feet come and clip the left leg there of Williams. Cole, I don't know if there's anything an offensive lineman can do, but is it just feel trying to stay away from traffic that's coming up from behind you in those scenarios? Yeah, the only thing that, that's even feasible, and I, I don't think he was guilty of it there, just continuing to run your feet. That way you don't have one of those legs planted as long where it can get taken out like that. If you get hit from the side and obviously you're not planted, you're not going to have a lot of damage that's going to be done. When that foot's planted in the ground, never comfortable. Mm. That's why you always hear, you know, run your feet, run your feet, keep your feet running. And he really did any offensive line run drill. I helped the big fella up. Not an easy lift. And Jordan will be helped to the sideline. By the way, it's a big weekend for a lot of folks close to tech, including assistant director of communications Andrew Clawson. He's working the game tonight. I had a chance to spend some time at practice with him on Thursday. And he said, yeah, kind of a big weekend for me. We're going to get back late Saturday night. And then I'm getting married on Sunday. Wow. Yeah, fiance Kristen Capello. They got a bunch of family in town tonight already in Atlanta. And, you know, they say in the South, don't get married on a fall weekend. But if you plan it right, I guess you could pull it off. Plan it right, it's a great double dip. That's right. The only thing better for him would have been a tech win on the road. 
I'm sure the lovely couple is registered somewhere. You can... Maybe that's the equivalent of like rain on your wedding day, you know, losing, your team good losing. Luck. It could be good luck. Yeah. That game's not over here, I'm just saying. Third and short for Georgia Tech and Haynes King. Well, congratulations to the beautiful couple tomorrow. Big day for them, for Andrew and Christina. Weston Franklin is the tech center. Play action again. King wanting to go deep. He's going to unload. Wide open. And it's a first and goal situation for Eric Singleton Jr. Singleton says, hurry to the line. He, he may think he didn't catch it. It's a gain of 51 as it stands. Underthrown to the point where he had to wait for it to come down. Tech had an extra man on the field. King pulls it back, eludes the first, it takes a loss of two on the play. As Shane Young escorts him out of bounds. Maybe the biggest win on that play, even though it lost yard because the Georgia Tech got it off. Keeping a replay from perhaps reversing their biggest gain of the night. Second and goal from the eight. Here's Haynes. Reaches for the pylon and gets shoved out of bounds just a hair short. Oh, touchdown! He got it! Georgia Tech able to cash in. Side judge making sure, confirming that he didn't step out of bounds. And the question will be if he had control of the football as it hit the pylon. Yeah, two things, the left foot and the control of the football. Ball definitely hits the pylon either right after or right before it starts moving. Let's see, left foot. Oh, I don't know. Is that out? That left foot is really close. Not sure that heel comes down and touches. Again, the ball ends up hitting the pylon. Well, there's a lot for replay to look at here. Rolling on the field. Your point touchdown. is the left foot the will be the play first the video thing. Yes. The second is if the ball was loose before it touched the pylon, it's a touchback in Ole Miss football. Right. If you had control of it, got the pylon touchdown. Now, let's look at the foot first. Ah, boy, I think yeah. that back clean yeah. is down. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see that toe stay up or the heel stay up and that toe stay in. Looks like I think the heel and maybe the side of the foot both out. What an effort to get the pylon. So again, the control at the pylon won't matter if obviously that foot is deemed out. With how quick that was, I feel like that's going to be the case. After video review, the runner was out of bounds at the one yard line. It will be third and goal on the one yard line. The ball was at the one when his foot was out of bounds at the two, so third and goal. 221 to play in the third quarter. This is where you're having a mobile quarterback. His legs come into play here. Seen it on both sides, both offenses tonight. What play call do you like? I like a little zone read or power for Haynes King. King takes it himself. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. That's what it was, little zone read. Loved, it, loved that they gave him the tight end coming across as a pass option just in case. Defender goes with the tight end and nobody there for the quarterback after a great read on the defensive end from Haynes King. A nine play, 78 yard drive, 51 of them coming on the long pass to Singleton. Point after is good. And Georgia Tech hanging in there. 
You can see Singleton on that long pass play. He's going to have a deep post. And the single high safety. So here's this deep post. Watch this big search route is really going to pull that safety. That's how this post is going to open up. Play action gets everybody's eyes backside. That search route, see the safety stop his feet for just a second. And that was one of those balls by Haynes King that's just like, don't overthrow him, don't overthrow him, don't overthrow him. And almost like catching a punt there by Singleton. He was bobbling that a little bit, but remember, Tech quickly got to the line. So that's the move point. Think, think how different this game would look if they would have thrown the flag on the fake punt. Yeah. What should have been. Next, yeah, Ole Miss ended up scoring after the the fake punt was failed on what could have been and maybe should have been a pass interference call. And this might be a one score game. Instead, 14 points for Ole Miss, but Georgia Tech getting themselves back in it. Knuckleball through the back of the end zone. 2.07 to go in the third quarter. Time to get it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Wherever fun happens. Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Twenty-four ten. 17th ranked Ole Miss trying to stay undefeated. Jackson Dart has two rushing touchdowns tonight. He had three for his entire FBS career coming into the game. They included two at Southern Cal and one here uh, at Ole Miss last year. And came into the game averaging 300 passing yards, third in the SEC. Just six completions tonight. Haven't needed his arm. Here's the reverse. And a room to run for Dayton Wade with Dart helping out with a block and a flag down. Legs in the backfield, and this one's coming back after what would have been a gain of four. Holding offense, number 66. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot remains first down. We think that's Quincy McGee, number 67, at left guard that got flagged. I think it is. I also think it's, I don't know if this is a hold. Here's, here's McGee here. It's starting to get really nitpicky with like the throwdowns. When, when, when you take a guy and you kind of wrestle him to the ground using your hands. I've seen it called a lot in pass pro yeah. this year. But I'm with you, Jordan. It didn't didn't feel like a hold to me. That one almost seemed like the D lineman wanted to go that way and he kind of just got tripped up and Man, we got movement on Ole Miss and they'll go back even farther. So false start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Jeremy James making his 39th consecutive start. Barely a flinch when we were watching the replay up here. Uh, first and 25, Dart. Can't get out of the pocket. And Georgia Tech comes up with a huge play after the Rebels make consecutive mistakes. Eddie Kelly with the sack. That's just great effort there by that Georgia Tech defensive line, but even better coverage. All right, the pocket was there initially for Jackson Dart, just nobody open, and they're heading the wrong way right now. Andrew Thacker's defense says Ole Miss looking at a second and 26. Rebels will keep it on the ground. Bentley was bottled up. Pass tense. What a move. And Bentley was able to turn it into an eight-yard gain. Little Le'Veon Bell right there. See you with the Steelers reference. Really patient run by Bentley breaking a tackle there. And so third. And 17 for Ole Miss. Tech is going to drop eight. Dart going to try to run. And he gets dragged down for a nine yard run. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Ole Miss will be punting it away, trying to hold on to a 14 point lead. Fourth quarter we go here in Oxford.
The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Bravo! You use the Quicksilver card from Capital One with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Ah! What's in your wallet? With college football on ESPN+, Plus, you get the best teams and the biggest conferences. And so much college football action from across the country. So sign up now at ESPNplus.com. A double dose of Monday Night Football. On ESPN, Carr and the Saints meet Young and the Panthers. On ABC, Chubb and the Browns face Pickett and the Steelers. Saints-Panthers at 7 on ESPN. Browns-Steelers at 8 on ABC. Fourth quarter in Oxford, Mississippi. We got a brand new game. Knox was having a party a moment ago, and still a moment ago, Cole with Lane Kiffin. Coach, a little, a little frustrated when you were talking to Jackson Dart right there. What was your message to him? Well, just stay the course. We came out, you know, had a good 14 0 run there, and, you know, run reverse, get a holding penalty on the other side. So that'll set you back 10 and a false start. So uh, it's not something they're doing. We just got to be consistent in what we're doing. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. So fourth and eight for the Rebels, and they'll punt it away. I haven't seen Frazier Mason tonight. There's punt. Dominic Blaylock takes a fair catch. 34 yard punt. And Georgia Tech back to work. Deep ball that King connected with the freshman Singleton on on that previous scoring drive was the longest play from scrimmage for Georgia Tech tonight. Does their offense have more of those in it? Well, it was set up off that stretch play, right? Uh -huh. you, you run the stretch so many times successfully, and then you do a big play action off it. I like them to see them get Cooley and Haynes, their running backs, involved out of the backfield a little bit more. Did that early on in the game, had some success with it, got some easy completions for Haynes King. King gets tripped up just as he gets out of the pocket. It's Mont Gordon. At a Meridian, Mississippi, with a stop. But to your point, this is not a team that's just going to line up and and run by defenders. So it needs to be play actions or break a tackle on the perimeter through the quick game. Rutherford might be their speediest receiver. And a caught made by the freshman Singleton. Yeah, Singleton, they're really excited about getting more playing time because Chase Lane is out. His first start was tonight and. He's got the speed to threaten you vertically and just stop route there at 10 yards after selling the nine route. King delivers on target to Trey Cooley. There's that running back out of the backfield. Now you're starting to see Georgia Tech get a little rhythm here. Remember, down two scores here in the fourth quarter. You maybe have three possessions. Got to score on at least two of them, right? So there's a sense of urgency as you get on this plus territory, this side of the field. And that clock is ticking, taking a lot of time right here for this play call. The first three drives for Georgia Tech were 12, 13, and 17 plays, respectively. Looking for some more chunk plays. This might be one of them. And Cooley picks up the first down on a 13-yard run. little inside zone to the left there. Good double team by the center and left guard. King 18 of 25 through the air tonight. There's Cooley. Bending it back to the left. Gene Baptiste with the stop. Well, let's see if Ole Miss comes out like they did that last play. They was giving those receivers on the top of your screen a lot of green grass. Look how much space they're giving these slot defenders. I mean, there, there's nobody right there. I might just pull up and throw it real quick. As Ole Miss shows pressure. He's gonna get man coverage on the outside if Ole Miss stays in this pressure. 
Blake Clark at two and they get it off. King keeps it. Jukes one guy and he picks up the first down. What a move to lose Coleman and he turns it into a gain of eight. Well, it's a great read and a great ride. Watch how he lets this ride happen and then one foot in the ground get north and south. And that's really on Ole Miss best, best athlete at linebacker Kari Coleman. It's a heck of a play there by Haynes King. Tech trying to put together back to back scoring drives. Cooley. He gets wrestled down by Trey Washington. Nearly a two yard gain on first down. Rutherford's trying to get King's attention pre-snap. King going over the middle, diving attempt, but incomplete. Singleton, the intended receiver, and just a hair in front of him. A yeah, little double move on the outside. John Saunders' safety does a great job of keeping his eyes on Dart, not getting fooled by the corner route by the tight end, and breaking that one up. What an effort. Third down, eight. Tech 10 of 15 on third downs tonight. Much more efficient second half against pressure. Back shoulder incomplete. And the timing was off, but there's a flag. Singleton interfered with by Zamari Walton. Well, it's obvious who they think they can go to for breakaway plays, and that's the freshman wide receiver that they've been targeting. Yeah, and I think they're talking about this a little longer because. There was contact initiated by both. There's no foul on the play. Yeah. It'll be fourth down. I was going to say, contact, a lot of contact initiated by Eric Singleton on this one as well. See, he extends the arm there. I mean, that little pull at the end, I don't know. That's. Well, I, I think you do. None of the borderline calls have gone text way tonight. Exactly, that's yeah. frustrating for a road team. And some of them haven't been borderline. Fourth and eight. Haynes in the backfield with King. Play clock at two. Fires in zone. Touchdown, Singleton. And a fourth down conversion, a 15 yard strike from Haynes King. Boy, so you catch Ole Miss in cover two here. This is just an inside release vertical, but I want you to watch this corner. Watch his eyes inside. He's feeling threatened by this running back coming out of the backfield. He's got to continue to sink with that outside receiver. Don't get your eyes in the backfield on fourth and eight. So what if they check it down, right? Yeah. You got to you got to worry about the guy that's running by you. That's why you see a lot more cover four in the red zone there instead of cover two, but just caught his eyes in the backfield. Aiden Burr adds the point after. We got a touchdown game. 10 31 to go in the fourth quarter. Haynes King is thrown for over 200 yards, and here he hooks up, hooks up with the fantastic freshman, Eric Singleton Jr. The vehicle is all electric, the feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. A place to reunite with your actual family of five and your chosen family of 105,213. Verb. Football away, baby. With college football on ESPN Plus, you get the best teams and the biggest conferences and so much college football action from across the country. So sign up now at ESPNPlus.com. All eyes are on the WNBA this postseason. Superstars elevate to new heights on the W's biggest stage. The moment is here. We're all about the WNBA playoffs. High 
above the square in Oxford. SEC Saturday night presented by T-Mobile. Ole Miss with a 24-17 lead. That's the five minutes into the fourth quarter. And a bit of a stressful week around these parts. Came ahead when DeSanto Rollins about a lawsuit against the school and coach Lane Kiffin Rollins who dealt with multiple injuries in his Rebels career said he was kicked off the team for missing practices and meetings during a quote mental health crisis racial and sexual discrimination are among multiple allegations in the lawsuit which was filed Thursday we asked Lane Kiffin about it yesterday and declined to comment deferring to the statement that Ole Miss put out late in the week that stated that Rollins was never removed from the team in fact his Still listed on the team roster and has access to all the university's resources. First and ten for Jackson Dart. He'll hand it off on an end around to Dayton Wade. And Wade stopped just short of a first down on a gain of nine. And here, if you're Lane Kiffin, right? I mean, Georgia Tech scores, makes it a one-score game. You don't have to feel the pressure. Don't get away from what you've been doing all game, right? The, the tendency to be, okay, we might need to throw it around a little bit. No, no, no. You've been running the football great. You've been running it great with Jackson Dart. Quinshawn Judkins here. This one's going to come back for a holding call, but stay the course. He said it to Cole in that interview, right? Don't start pressing. They've been running the football all night. Offense, number 57. That's a right tackle, Micah Pettis. Second down. Well, the mistakes that Ole Miss made on their previous possession, they backed them up and then resulted in a good field position for Georgia Tech. Back-to-back -to -back penalties on the offensive line last time. On second and 11, Dart. Complete for a first down. Dayton Wade takes it all the way down to the 35-yard line. Gain of 40. Boy, this is such a good job by Jackson Dart. Pocket collapsed a little bit. He stepped up. And hit Dayton Wade right in the void underneath the safety. Dart keeps it and gets popped in the backfield and taken down by Paul Mawala. It's a loss of three. Mawala played the Idaho Vandals last year, one of a handful of transfers that have made an impact on this Georgia Tech team. Meanwhile, Micaiah Scott, South Carolina transfer, is injured. They're looking at his left leg and his knee. Oh, you hate to see that. Big completion took Ole Miss into Georgia Tech territory. The Rebels looking at a second and 12 when we return to Oxford. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes Benz. On season six of Fansville by Dr. Pepper, things are heating up. Mom, Dad, I have a girlfriend, and she likes college football. The stars have arrived. I've made my choice. This season, I will be drinking Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. And everyone wants a taste of fame. Welcome back to Chuck's Take, because every fan needs a podcast. To get a thick color, I use two coats of maroon. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. I love your nails. Thank you. With college football on ESPN Plus, you get the best teams and the biggest conferences and so much college football action from across the country. So sign up now at ESPNplus.com. Well, good to see Scott jogging back to the uh, Georgia Tech sideline, the junior from Gainesville, Georgia. Th this turnaround that we discussed earlier with Georgia Tech last year, two top 25 wins after the coaching change. And you just compare these two games, drastically different. I mean, this was a 42 nothing. You know what else is interesting is someone had a birthday today. Yep, that's right. Did, did you wonder why none of us said anything to you all day? Yeah, I got the silent treatment. Yeah, you're like, we're just, do you think we just didn't have good friends? Or I used to have friends. 
Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were going to do that, RG. I don't know, I might. I still might. Who's going to eat the cake? Garza did a great job making that cake today. Second down. And Wade. The frosting. Picks up five. Frosting's good. I'm doing no sweets, so I just did a little taste. You know, you should rub that on your What jacket. do I do with this thing now? Are you gonna, you want, you gonna eat it? You gonna stick your face in it? You gonna move on? I'm gonna take it with me. Happy birthday, we love you, dude. Yeah, thanks, pal. Happy birthday, Tom. With friends like you guys. <laughs> he just put the kick on your ruined jacket. Third and six. That's all you got me. Dart comes back for a screen and Georgia Tech plays it well. Wade taken down after a gain of three. Mm. And here comes Caden Davis to attempt a long field goal to extend the lead. I actually love the play call. Little run action away, throwing the slip screen backside. Just a really good play there by Georgia Tech to sniff it out. 44 yard attempt for Davis. He's already made from 47 and 54. Big here though, push the two scores with under eight minutes. And that one is well through the uprights. A two score game with 7.45 to play. Gabe Davis is tough, not too many kickers out there with a strawberry on his elbow, but he is playing through the pain, all relative. It's a 10 point lead on my birthday. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. From the office to off-duty, Charles Tirrett makes it easy for men to dress well. The London shirt specialist has over 600 styles to choose from, including golf-ready polos, sharp merino sweaters, and of course, the expertly crafted shirts and suits they're famous for. And every style comes with a six-month quality guarantee, so you can shop in total confidence. Plus, for a limited time, you can get three shirts or polos for $99 and free shipping. Shop at charlestirrett.com and use code LONDON for proper quality, style, and value. Charles Tirrett. Series champions! Back at Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. Hotty toddy indeed, and Ole Miss with a two score lead. That guy is intense. Georgia Tech has found a rhythm with its offense. There's no doubt about that. Now midway through the fourth, they need to keep it going. Yeah, and I think they found a go-to receiver as well. We mentioned Chase Lane out, hasn't played tonight, but the true freshman Eric Singleton making his first career start has made some big plays on the outside. A couple stop routes, obviously had the touchdown catch in the corner to make it a one-score game. Now down 10. They'll need two scores. I wouldn't be surprised if they go in his direction a few more times. Ames King, Texas A&M transfer, played for his dad, Longview, Texas. Grew up around the game. Hands it off, and Jamal Haynes picks up five on first down. Well, Tom, you mentioned that knowing the game with Haynes King. Brent King talked a lot to me about why they brought him in, how they brought him in, and he said the knowledge of every position on the offense was something that really stuck out to him. Once he knew that he had to break down what receivers, backs in the offensive line were doing, he knew that he was a guy that could start a quarterback from the tip. King pressured. And can't quite get out of it. That'll bring up third down after a loss of two. Huge third down here. It's it's not the game yet. Seven minutes left, but this is that brought pressure. King down the sideline and batted away. Tremendous effort by Walton, who got injured on the play. And immediately the Georgia Tech athletic training staff out to help him. Timeout for an injured player. Hmm.
He went down awkwardly on his right arm after denying the pass. Yeah, it's a good job in initial contact here. Gets a step behind. That ball needs to be out in front. Still recovered oh, in good right position, hand. and yeah, came down awkwardly on that that right arm. Mato just jams up all the way to his shoulder. Oh yeah, you can almost yeah. see the shoulder pad pop. Mar Walton is one of a handful of former Yellow Jackets playing on this old Miss roster. Lane Kiffin has made no bones about it. They want to come, everybody come to the SIP. And, and their new recruiting philosophy is why go after high school seniors if we can go get a guy who's played elsewhere? Has a little bit of experience. It's worked out pretty well. Trey Harris is a good one. Jordan Watkins. They've done well plug and play. Second string punter, Josh Taylor. Is on the field now for Georgia Tech. And Taylor gets rid of it quickly and keeps it clean. His first ever punt, and Ole Miss will get it back in a moment. The vehicle is all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. The EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Everyone is ready for a double dose of Monday Night Football. First on ESPN at 7, Saints new quarterback Derek Carr leads New Orleans against number one draft pick Bryce Young and the Panthers. And on ABC at 8, it's more football as Nick Chubb and the Browns head to Pittsburgh to face Kenny Pickett and the Steelers. Saints Panthers at 7 on ESPN and Brown Steelers at 8 on ABC. The Little League World Series champions! The wild, wild SEC West has never been, well, wilder. LSU, A&M, even Bama have already lost. Now comes conference play, and their rivals smell opportunity. The result is going to be a bunkhouse stampede. So grab a hat, some shades, a toothpick to gnaw on, and let her rip. And the West is wild again today. Alabama had to struggle to get by South Florida. The game was tied at three at the half. Here's a preseason poll. Alabama and LSU 1-2, and they've each both suffered a loss. Ole Miss, Arkansas, Auburn still undefeated overall. Big opportunity for Ole Miss next week going to Tuscaloosa. Huge opportunity. The way Alabama looked tonight, Ole Miss looks a lot better right now. And by the way, Arkansas trailing at BYU by a touchdown Ooh. in the fourth quarter. Arkansas trailing BYU. And Judkins loses a yard. My bad, I said that was at BYU. They're actually in Fayetteville. A lot of people get Fayetteville confused with Provo. So hope your pilot doesn't. Second down. Dart going deep. Caught for the first down. Watkins to the end zone. Touchdown, Rebels. 68 yards. Boy, that run game sure does open things up. Darts thrown for 208. He's run for 136. And they didn't waste any time extending the lead. Been kind of waiting for that, huh? Mm -hmm. We knew it's in the arsenal. Jackson has improved so much in the deep ball. They were just biding their time. 
Davis with the point after under six to go 34 17. Let's take a look at tonight's high speed play brought to you by T Mobile 5G home internet. Longest Ole Miss play of the season. That's a great route by Jordan Watkins. I love they start him in a tight split. So he's got a chance to widen the safety and then take the middle of the field. You're going to see it here in that tight split. Now he widens that safety and then takes the middle of the field. Great job of setting up leverage and a great throw by Jackson Dart to cap it off. Jackson also pumped one direction, so move those backside defenders while Jordan Watkins was working on the route on the front side. Just a great job of execution all around. I want to come back as a fire extinguisher guy. Life for the party. I don't think Knox is going to let you take his job. Well, he already got a sub in there for him. <laughs> you know, Lane Kiffin was very frustrated at points tonight. He had a drop pass in the end zone. He was frustrated with some decision making. He's still very driven in this moment. I think he is very aware of the potential of this team, especially from a skill position standpoint. They, they are far from perfect. There's a lot of work to do. But what we were talking about a moment ago, what is waiting for them in a week, the opportunity for Lane Kiffin to go back to Tuscaloosa, I don't know if Ole Miss and Alabama have ever been this equal from a talent standpoint. No, and from where I'm sitting, Ole Miss is a better team right now. But what I saw in the Alabama game today, especially when you look at Lane Kiffin's track record of knowing how to attack the Nick Saban defense, yeah. right? I mean, he knows its weaknesses, and he has the full arsenal, especially if Trey Harris gets back in the lineup, right? Trey, they're, they're targeting next week possibly, but Jackson's playing an elite level with his legs, with his arm. Quinshawn Judkins healthy and out there tonight. This Ole Miss team's just starting to hit their stride. James King swings it to the outside. Dominic Blaylock up the sideline. Zakari Franklin could be a possibility in this yeah. lineup next week as well. There's a lot of explosiveness in it. No doubt about it. Remember, Hugh Freeze was here. They got back to back wins against Alabama. At one point, they had the number one recruiting class in the country that was part of that. But stacking four classes together, or five like Alabama does, and then they go out, use a transfer porter to fill in. Where their needs are, it's, it, it'd be really interesting matchup next week. I wonder how far, just off the top of my head, Cole, how far back would you have to go to find a time where Ole Miss had the better quarterback? No question asked. Well, if there was no debate, I'd probably go back to maybe Eli Manning playing here at Ole Miss. I mean, look, look what Alabama's had rolled through the last, I mean, the last four or five guys they've had. They're all on the start on Sundays. Right now, yeah. yeah. Well, this is what is up next for Ole Miss. Trying to finish this one off on a third and two, and they get in the backfield. Take down King. And took down both guys on a fake to Trey Cooley. Boy, the Darius Tennyson has been all over the backfield. Number 13 right there. We've seen him blitz in the A gap, blitz in the B gap, and that time closing in on the quarterback there and making a big play. King with the pump and can't quite get there. There'll be another turnover on downs for Georgia Tech tonight. Well, Haynes King has taken a beating tonight. Last couple of shots coming from Ladarius Tennyson. Well, I tell you, Pete Golding had great comments about Ladarius Tennyson yesterday. We spoke to him. Said he plays our big nickel, elite ability. Said he's the fastest guy on this defense. And secondary coach Wes Neighbors told me before the game he is a big piece of what allows us to do the things we do. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast about the rotation of the safeties coming down, playing the alley, having to play the run. Got to be physical. And Tennyson, a big time player in this Ole Miss defense. Yeah, and that one, Dejon Anthony and Jeremiah Jean Baptiste finished Haynes King off on fourth down there. But I've been impressed by this defense for Ole Miss. Flag down as Judkins tried to bounce it back inside. Especially the way the secondary players, Holding. the Offense corners. number 57, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. They have rallied. 
to those perimeter plays. They got Micah Pettis. You know, Wallace was banged up and Pettis is still very animated afterwards. He can't he can't believe it. He got tripped up at the tail end of it. You can see Pettis here. The green the game clock never ran on the previous play. Please set the game clock to four minutes. This gets a little bit of the seconds. jersey with his left Thank hand. You. Also a little knee to the back there, a little trick by O lineman Cole would be familiar with. Are you saying all offensive linemen are cheaters? No, no, no. It's just you know, no trick. Get a guy on the ground. You just you want to you want to make sure he he feels you. <laughs> KJ Wallace weighs a buck eighty six and Pettis goes three sixty. I think he felt it. Uh -oh. Dart down the sideline, open. The one, it's Dayton Wade. 43 yard strike. This offense well oiled. First and goal from the one. Give Judkins a chance, and he submarines in. Final score is going to show Ole Miss with the blowout. It was much closer than that, especially early in the fourth quarter. But now we're seeing the Rebels utilize all of their weapons. You knew the double move was coming at some point, right? Georgia Tech just plays too much man on the outside, and they timed it perfectly. Two plays to cover 34 yards on the drive in total. It was just a handful of completions in the first half for Jackson Dart. Really did it all with his legs. But his arm has come alive in the second half here. Great shot up the seam to get things going to Jordan Watkins. Deep over route to Dayton Wade. And then you really see him start to work here. The deep shot downfield to Watkins and another deep shot. Downfield to Dayton Wade on the double move. Great hitch and go against soft man coverage. And he's just showing off now. This was the glaring improvement that I talked to Jackson about yesterday. You see the numbers there. Third most attempts on those shot plays of 20 plus or more downfield. Not a good completion percentage. And he's been on the money so far this year and on the money tonight. He's got four of those chunk plays tonight, including that 43 yarder to Wade. A moment ago. 251 in the air, 136 on the ground. Dart is the second Ole Miss player in the last 25 years to throw for 200, run for 100. Chad Kelly was the other, did that in 15. Had two rushing touchdowns for the accomplishment in a single game. And Ole Miss being a quick strike offense, as we showed you with their opening drives of the first two games, they've got touchdown drives of 35 yards or less three times tonight. So. Field position has been a key. Turnover on downs, the fake punt. King overcooked that one into the turf. And second and ten. Just really can't state enough how the deep ball from Jackson Dart, his improvement just completely unlocks this offense. Mm -hmm. When you can run the way Ole Miss can, did last year and are going to continue to be able to do so this year. They're able to stretch the field vertically, consistently, and dangerously. That's just a nightmare for defensive coordinators. They're going to have Kevin Steele and Nick Saban with their hands full and prep. 
this upcoming week as well. Well, Alabama's at a place, especially offensively, where Alabama has to worry about Alabama first. <laughs> no doubt. Ten completed passes from the two quarterbacks to play today. Not good. Jalen Milrow did not see the field after starting the first two games. King pressured. And great hands to come back for that one by Blaylock. And then leave fourth and short. Wow, that was an amazing Ooh. catch. Great throw under pressure and a great catch. Georgia Tech one for four on third down tonight. One for four on fourth down. Prior to the penalty, timeout, Georgia Tech. It is their first, it will be 30 seconds. The Tech able to stop the clock before they got penalized, which would, be, would have been their first of the night. Cole, we, we went through how Brent Key turned this thing around for Georgia Tech last year. Why do you think it seems to be such a good fit for him at his alma mater? I think he understands the landscape. It's going to be easier for him to get the right people behind the program. It can help them do the things that they need to do to be successful. Uh, he's always been a great recruiter wherever he's been, uh, specifically at Alabama, where he obviously had had access to high profile recruits. So not only is he going to be able to try to go attack those players out of high school, but through the portal as well. I mean, you have to have those relationships. It's one of the things we talked to Pete Golding about it yesterday here at Ole Miss. And he was talking about certain guys that he was either able to keep here from league in the portal or get out of the portal to be able to come here because he knew the coach, he knew the player, because he had been recruiting players of that caliber for a long time. Fourth and one for Georgia Tech coming out of the timeout. And they'll try to run for it. And the reach got it for him. It, Lane Kiffin told us this funny story yesterday when asked about Brent Key, and, and he described him first as basically a good soldier he said you know I, I'm, I do my thing this guy was never controversial he, he never combative you say here's a problem we need you to fix it and he's going to find a way to fix it he said the other thing I like about Brent is we both really love the water and I asked Brent about this before the game he, Kippen said you know we decided to go on the lake one day so I show up and he's got a pontoon boat and I look at him and I go, really, a pontoon? So I share the story with Key, because you know, like, look at these guys. Brent Key's an old offensive lineman. He's a pontoon guy. Lane Kiffin's in Boca with the speedboats, right? Yeah. Brent goes, well, if he didn't like the pontoon, why did he call and ask to borrow it every other weekend? That was a loaded staff. And the one person not pictured who was also a head coach, Steve Sarkeesian was an analyst on his staff in 2016 that took over for the national championship game. There's Kiffin and Key, obviously the head coaches tonight. And that staff littered with head coaches. Billy Napier got a huge win tonight against Tennessee. Jeremy Pruitt was a head coach for a moment. Mario Cristobal, Mike Loxley in Maryland. Man, does, here's the question. Kind of chicken or the egg. Does Saban know how to get guys to be head coaches? Or do they, like, does he know how to identify them or does he build them into head coaches? I think it's both, right? I don't, I don't think it can be one or the other. He does such a great job of bringing in talented coaches and indoctrinating them in his system, mm -hmm. right? His process that has built and sustained the success that Nick Saban's been able to. So a little bit of both. Uh, I think he attracts the talent of coaches that want to come learn under him. Know it's a stepping stone to another great opportunity. And the coaches that have worked for him will tell you the, the discipline and the details would really stand out. Completion over the middle to Christian Leary. The details, right? That's what everybody says. Yeah. No detail, no minute anything gets past Nick Saban, which is pretty incredible. Under two minutes to play, 41-17. King going to the end zone, and out of bounds and incomplete.
think they really have found something in Eric Singleton. He's way out of bounds, but a heck of a catch, too, to bring that one down. Not going to count. High school champion in the 100 meter in Georgia, 10-2. Yeah. That's moving. Flags up and good catch by Avery Boyd. If it stands, it's a Georgia Tech touchdown, but and it will. All sides. Defense number 96. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. They like what they saw the first time, and then like, well, let's just get the 6-2 guy instead of the 5-11 guy. So they're gonna go for two here. Great ball and the length there by Boyd. Going to help him bring that one down. Go for two to bring it within 16. My math right there. Yep, that's uh, notable to some. King had the flat, lobs in zone and incomplete. Good cover in the end zone by Ole Miss. One thirty-four to play. And if there were questions about this Ole Miss team before the game offensively, especially establishing the run game, th those were answered by Jackson Dart. Yeah. And then the explosiveness was evident, especially in the fourth quarter. Let's look ahead a little bit. How does that all match up when they go to Tuscaloosa next week? I think it matches up well, right? I mean, you have a quarterback who's able to stretch the field vertically, able to attack you in the run game. I think Alabama's got some good speed at the second level. Deontay Lawson's been an eraser as a linebacker, but I think the better matchup and the interesting matchup is going to be what Alabama does at quarterback and, and how this Ole Miss defense on, goes to attack it. Real quick, we got a couple tech people in oh, here. Chris yeah, Capo and Greg right. Campbell do a fantastic job for us. How are you guys week. feeling? Yeah, not great, huh? <laughs> There's a reason we never open their mic. Oh, sorry guys. Usually we're watching the tech game in the booth along yeah. with our game, and they're more emotional. But I'm very proud of them. They both played it right down the middle today. A little onside kick here. Let's see how many times they can get this one to bounce. At practice Thursday, it was more in the air, but that one was a bouncer. Dayton Wade covers it up. Ole Miss has the third most points of the first three games of the season since the poll era. That was 1936. They're outscoring those high powered offenses they had back in 2015. And Two years ago in 21, as they raced their way to a 10 win regular season for the first time ever. Spencer Sanders, the Oklahoma State transfer, taking over quarterback now. And Kiffin raised a bunch of eyebrows when he went in the portal and got Sanders. This was a crowded quarterback room in the spring, and among those eyebrows that he raised, as Sanders shows what he can do with his legs. Uh, we're Jackson Darts. We asked him about it yesterday, and he said, Yeah, when I first heard we were going after Spencer, I had a lot of questions. And finally, Kiffin sat him down and said, Explain to him what we need from a depth standpoint, how Jackson can, uh, how Spencer can help him. And all of these coaches raved about the work that Spencer Sanders continues to do, even as a backup. In fact, late Thursday night, as a second string quarterback, he was still in the facility watching film late. Here's Matt Jones with the carry and a first down. First touch of the night, and Jones takes it to the house. Now Jackson Prep has sent a star or two up the road to Oxford, and Jones might be next in line. Or a little counter play there from Ole Miss sending two pulling guards the opposite direction little wrong rate wrong way run and that was really what set it up there wasn't phenomenal blocking out ahead just a ton of green grass by the misdirection that occurred in the backfield
What was the score at halftime? 10-3? It's 48-23. 37 points in the fourth quarter. Well, Georgia Tech had second half issues against Louisville. And more issues here tonight. LaMiles Brooks got injured early in this game. They had some key injuries throughout the night. Second half, Ole Miss, not just 38 points, but also 341 yards on 25 plays. Is that explosive enough for you? I'd say it's pretty decent. 13.6 per. So just a first down per play. <laughs> a first down and a third the other way to the next one. <laughs> You know who it keeps busy on nights like tonight? We saw the Rotsy guys doing the push-ups. The ball boys. Oh, that yeah. is a lot of sprinting up and down to try to keep up with the line of scrimmage. I think our buddy Brian Layden is getting some running in tonight. He was active on the sideline last week. On the Ole Miss sideline, and after this Jordan Watkins catch, got up to say something, and Layton's goes, No, 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 no. There he is. It's the last time we spot shadowed a ball boy. Get back out there. Give the ball to ref. Come on, tempo. And Quain, the equipment manager here, oversees the ball boys. And they got a good crew. You, you never know the value. Of a ball boy, especially those that are on the opposite sideline. The one that long ago when Cole was playing at Auburn, Cole, uh, basically your guy was embedded for y'all. Well, I tell you, you, there's a lot of information that you can get from a ball boy that's on the opposite sideline. They're going to come so back to true. your sideline at halftime, and he used to tell us exactly what they were talking about. He'd be like, hey, left tackle, they think they can get you inside. Hey, they don't think the zone play is going to work. They're going to start rolling the safety down. They're going to bring the linebackers in the B gap. I mean, it, sometimes you didn't want to hear it. They'd be like, hey, they think the center's terrible. Like, oh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to say that in front of everybody? <laughs> Behind enemy lines over there. That's so true. They would come back. But you'd be surprised. Yep. The, the, the amount of detail that he would come back to our sideline with was incredible. King able to connect with Leary again for the first down. And I will say, working sidelines every week, I see some that look like they may be doing that, and I see some that are completely checked out. Yeah. And they have no idea what's going on other than running the footballs back and forth. I see the same from announcer. Hey, oh. Oop. King over 300 yards passing tonight. And he'll add to that total. Well, for Georgia Tech, they'll try to get back to it. And they go on the road to Winston-Salem to take on Wake Forest next week. And for Jackson Dart and Ole Miss, it's a trip over to Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. Two old friends meet at midfield. Kiffin and Key. And I think we Lane Kiffin is a perfectionist in many ways and knows that there's work to do to come out with an SEC win next week against Alabama, but he's got to be happy with the fourth quarter. Well, I say got to. Let's find out. Cole is with the head coach. You mentioned finishing at halftime. Are you happy with the way your team finished this game? I mean, it wasn't perfect by any means, but I'm happy that we did run the ball better and hit some explosive plays there late in the passing game and got some stops. So um, a lot better, you know, end up with the whatever three score game, um, you know, when it was tight at half. So really, you know, that's three weeks in a row playing really good second half football. You mentioned running the football better. A lot of that was Jackson Dart. How much can you build around him actually carrying the football like he did tonight? I mean, it's not ideal, but we got to do whatever we have to do to win. So, you know, when people are closing and taking away the runs, he pulls the ball. So it is what it is. A couple deep shots late in this game as well when it felt like the game was under control. This offense just no breaks at all, does it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't really like how that last run hit. We were just... Spencer hadn't played. We put all our twos in and it hit. You know, I got a lot of respect for Coach Key and their staff, but it is what it is. Alabama next. When I say that, what do you think? Uh, I'm just going to go figure out how we can get better, and, and I guess we go into Tuscaloosa. Thanks, Coach. All right. I guess we go into Tuscaloosa, facing an Alabama team 
the guys in the studio will talk about tonight that has a lot of question marks and inconsistencies especially on the offensive side of the ball 48 23 is our final score coming up next SEC football final highlights analysis from all the games this weekend Cole Kublik Jordan Rogers our fantastic crew I'm Tom Hart in mere moments on SEC football final you'll hear from Jackson Dart but first to Dari. All right Tom thank you and